Hello there, very good morning to you. Welcome along to Sane Street, lovely to have your company. Hope you're keeping safe and well. Uh, my name's Debbie Shaw and I'm going to be with you live for the next three hours with lots of sewing stuff and lots of great offers for you as well. We've got machines, we've got some new rulers for you, we've got marking tools and because you're here with us bright and early at eight o'clock in the morning, we have a special offer for you. So this is something that we try to do every single morning. We call it the early bird. So those of you who are up nice and early can start shopping with bargains. And this is what we have for you today. So we've got two rainbow pastel fat quarter bundles for £19.98 gives you that saving of £6. Now if you're new to Sewing Street and you see here at the side it says 3.95 PMP all day, that means that if you order now while we have the stock, um, because these tend to go so quickly, um, and then you come back later on in the day and you want to order something else, whether it's a packet of pins or a sewing machine, we don't add any extra postage for you as long as you order before midnight tonight. So the early birds get in there early, you get your bargains, you make your savings and then rest assured that you can come back and shop with us as long as you like without having to pay any extra postage. So let me open one of these up and show you what's in here. Gorgeous colours for springtime. They actually um, remind me of um, sugared almonds. Really pretty colours, 100% cotton. And this is the array of colours that you have. So these will make great blenders. If you're patchworking, if you're quilting, if you wanted that extra little pop of colour or a plain colour to make your more expensive pattern colours last a little bit longer, um, then these are perfect for you. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight all together. And if you're new, or 16 because there's two of them, um, if you're new to sewing in general, that is the size of your fat quarter. So it's a quarter of a metre of fabric but cut off the bolt in squares instead of in strips. But really useful. Useful to just have in your stash to um, maybe make a cushion cover backing or a little bit of lining or a drawstring bag or smaller projects like that. Or of course, if you are patchwork and you join them all together and you can make yourself quite a large quilt out of those. All a 100% cotton. Maybe you do get the both of those. And even if you don't have a project in mind, I think it's always useful to keep, um, to keep a little stash of pieces like this because they will come in useful at some point. Maybe you're embroidering. Oh, do stay with us if you have a, a machine embroider, an embroidery machine, because we, <laughs> we've got some fantastic threads coming up for you too. Um, but these would make a nice background for a little bit of free motion embroidery if you're going to applique over the top of them, if you're quilting through them. And so many for £19.98. I think that is such good value for money. So we'll keep these here for as long as we have them. But the sooner you check out, the sooner they're yours. But they're, they're going to be really useful. So that's a great early bird for you. Um, but we have got lots in the show for you this morning. In fact, we've got lots in, in all of the shows for you today. We've got a, a, a studio full. It doesn't take much to fill our studio, I have to say. It's very tiny. And we are being safe and well here, so we're trying to stay on air for as long as we possibly can. Um, so in the studio today is myself and Kat next door, who's directing on camera. She says hello. And we have Hayley at home, and she's, she's producing today. So it's very, very small stuff and very far apart. Right, what will she have a look at next? I did. Oh, if you want to send a message, by the way, I've got my Facebook page open. So this is the Sewing Street TV Facebook page. Um, if you go along to visitor posts, that's the page that I've got. So if you've got any questions, if you want to see anything again, if you need anything measuring, if you just want to share some pictures of what you've been making, um, if you've got any questions technically that you want to ask, then do come through and leave a message there. Or if you're just feeling a bit lonely and you want to come and say hello, we'll say hello back again. <laughs> Um, Hayley at home says hello, by the way. Right, so I, I did say, didn't I, if you have an embroidery machine, we've got something special for you. We've got 50 spools of thread in 50 colours. Now, you'll know what it's like with your embroidery machines. You can never have enough thread. And the, even when you've got the 50, you'll never have the right colour. There'll always be one colour that you want or you need. Um, but these are such a wide variety. Every one of these is a different colour. You're going to be using a lot of embroidery thread. And you're going to be shading, you're going to be colouring with your machines. Um, and it's just so nice to have a complete palette of so many different colours. 50 in total, which is pretty amazing. Um, I'll just, I shan't take all of them out, but just to give you an idea of the kaleidoscope of colours that you're going to have. 
So you've got your, your greens and your browns for your landscapes. You've got blues for the skies. We've got all of the colours of the rainbow. We've even got some neons in here as well. Now embroidery thread, important to use embroidery thread when you have an embroidery machine. Um, it tends to be finer than regular thread. It's polyester, so it's strong and it has a really nice sheen to it. The fineness of the thread is important because with your embroidery stitches you're going to be sewing over and over and over in the same spot. So we don't want, to, we don't want the thread to be leaving big holes in your work. And um, because your embroidery thread, uh, your embroidery designs are normally raised, then this has such a lovely sheen to it, the light bounces off it. So just use this in the top of your work, use your bobbin fill in the bottom, unless of course you're going to see both sides of your embroidery, but that doesn't happen very often. Look how many you're getting here. I'm not, I'm not even halfway through yet, but you get an idea. I just wanted to show you a range of all of those different colours that you have available. A lot of the times with these um, boxes, um, you might get 10 and then, the, then we'll be saying, oh, you've got enough space to put some of your own in there. There is no space in this one because every one of those 50 spool holders has thread on it. So we've got black and you've got your beiges. So you've got your very useful colours. I thought they were the same. They're very, very slightly different. One's a very dark grey and one's a black. I thought, no, I've been saying that everyone's different but every one of these is actually different so fabulous box what a great gift idea this is for and does that make a really loud noise by the way i do apologize um gift idea for anybody that you know that has an embroidery machine or if you just want to do a bit of free motion embroidery on your sewing machine these again are ideal threads for you i like the idea of having lots of colors though um i think particularly with embroidery thread like this, if you have a specific design that you want to make and you don't have the thread in the right colour, that was going so well, um, you normally make do, don't you? You put up with it, you go for a colour that's similar but not exactly the same as the one that you want. Not quite right, but be fine. Um, but you know that you, you probably got the exact colour that you need in there. And it's all kept nice and neat and organised in a box that you can see through so you can see when you're running out of the threads as well. Now all of that for £49.99. pence. We have done a little bit of shopping around to see if we could um, compare prices. And the only price that we could find for this same box was £56. That's the lowest price that we could find it. So n normally when we bring you this, we just sell out so many times. So we've got it back in stock for you right now. So if you missed out before, now's a good time to place your order. And if you'd like to, you can go to our website, which is sewingstreet.com and uh, take a look around all of the other products that we have there for you. Or you can order on the phone lines, which is 0800 001 4433. And that is a UK based um, call centre, which is nice to know as well. And we're still managing to ship out on time at the moment as well. So we're doing our best to get everything um, as normal for you as possible anyway. So that's £49.99 if you'd like to place your order. Don't be sad. It's like another early bird all over again, isn't it? All these offers coming through. Um, now something that you may think, well, I've got one of those already, is a seam ripper. You probably have got one already. If you've got a sewing machine, you'll have a seam ripper because 99% of sewing machines come with a seam ripper. But they blunt. They'll blunt just like um, a pair of scissors or just like a needle or a pin, your sewing machine needle. Um, and the, the, the more you use it, the quicker it's going to blunt. So it's nice to have a quality seam ripper. Some of the ones that come with the sewing machines aren't particularly. Um, this is a nice long one. It's got an ergonomic handle, so it's easy to grip as well. And it's only £2.99. Look at that, it's £2.99, your postage is £3.95, so I'm not going to buy that, I'll pay more for the postage. Um, remember I said earlier on about the £3.95 postage all day? You could buy that now and pay you £3.95 postage and come back later on and buy a pen and then buy some fabric and then buy a sewing machine and it'll still only be the £3.95 postage. So add it to your order. Even if you don't need a seam ripper at the moment, you will do at some point. And this is something else that we sell out of so many times as well. So a back in stock for you for just £2.99. Multi-order if you like. Uh, we don't limit these offers to one per customer. You can buy as many of those as you wanted to. Not all seam rippers have the little red dot on the end either, which is useful for a couple of things. As you're ripping your seams, it, it helps to stop the, the points snagging on your fabric. I tend to rip 
this way. I'm, I think I'm just used to doing that. But if you've got holes left in your, um, in your fabric where the needle's been, or your pins have been, and you just rub over it with the red dot, it can help the threads to close back over again. So, that's what your red dot's for. Who knew? <laughs> right. We have some marking tools for you. And we've got three. So first of all, we've, well, we've got water erasable, air erasable and the hair marker. And uh, they, all, they all play different roles. So your water erasable pen does just what it says on the packet. Um, when you dampen this with water, it will disappear. I know a lot of quilters like to use water erasable ink. And let me just show you how that's going to work. So as you're marking, and this could be marking... Um, where you're going to quilt, if you're a dressmaker, it could be transferring the markings from your pattern. It could be the position of a magnetic snap on a, on a, uh, a bag flap. Um, there's going to be times where you need to mark your fabric for some reason or another. So I've marked it. Now this mark will stay here until it gets wet. Um, don't iron it. Don't iron either of these pens because they will become permanent if you do that. But when you don't need the lines there anymore, you're just going to take a damp cloth and wipe it away. So you don't have to put it in the washing machine. A sponge would be better. And you can be quite accurate just dampening away the areas that you don't want it to be. So that's gone. So again, useful tools. If you don't want to get your work wet, then we have an air erasable tool, and this has got two different um, nip, nip, nib widths, nib size. It's about a thin one and a fat one. Um, so a very fine line with this one and slightly thicker with that one. Again, don't iron these. Um, so be careful if you're pressing um, as you're sewing because that, again, will become permanent. And this will disappear after a few hours, or maybe seven or eight hours, that will start to fade. So if you're doing something like um, smocking, um, which is quite time consuming, don't use this pen because you'll find when you come back to your work that all the ink's disappeared. Um, but if you're dressmaking, if you're quilting, um, then, then that's going to be a good one for you. So you've got two different choices there. If you don't want to get your work wet, go for the air erasable. Um, if you want the lines to disappear when you want them to, instead of waiting for them, then you go for the water erasable. Or you don't have to make any markings on your fabrics at all if you're using a hera marker. So if you haven't seen one of these tools before, it's very useful. You've got a curved edge here, and this is actually what marks. But you've also got a right angle on this side, so you can use this for pushing out corners. And again, it's got a nice easy grip to the handle. So this time, as I'm marking, and this could be a quilt, this could be just making the little marks, the you know, little triangle marks on your dressmaking patterns. So if you wanted a large mark or a small mark, you're just going to run your, um, your hair and marker across your fabric, and it leaves like a score line, and that will be a line on both sides of your fabric as well. And in fact, it's gone through to, to that piece too. So if you're, if you're transferring markings and you need those on both sides, um, normally you'd be marking on one side, marking on another side, maybe doing tailor's tacks, maybe using air or water erasable pens. Um, if you are quilting and you're not sure about pens or a little bit worried about pens marking your fabric, then this is going to be a great alternative for you as well. So these lines will disappear with a little blast of steam from your iron, but they're clear enough for you to be able to see them. Now you can use these with your rulers as well. So for instance, let's get my big board out for this one. And my ruler. These are all coming up later on today, by the way. And let's make a little quilt. Just nip you back to the early bird, those two uh, fat quarter bundles. We've got less than 10 of those remaining now. So um, stop watching for a minute and go and place your order if you want to get hold of those. They're under £20 for both of those and getting 16 pieces all together. So if I'm making up my quilt sandwich with um, Swan Feathers fabric, which is available on the website, um, you will have your top layer, you'll have your 
uh, your wadding. Um, that's available as well, it's the polyester one, so it's nice and thick and chunky. And you'll have your backing fabric. And then we'll take a ruler and a marker. And score. However far apart, I'm not going to measure those and do it properly, you get the idea. Wherever you want the lines to be. You see how quick that is? So I know a lot of quilters particularly aren't too fond of using any kind of inks on the fabric. So this is a great alternative for you and it's so quick as well. So you're not adding any colour, you're not adding any ink, you're simply making a score line. Another thing you'll find it really useful for, so you can see there, um, is, if I just lift that up a bit, you should be able to see all the marks on there. Um, if you're hemming, if you need to hem something really accurately, I'll just take these away. So if I need, um, say, a quarter of an inch hem, instead of taking it to the ironing board and folding it over and guessing where your quarter of an inch is, and then ironing, and you can never get that completely accurate. Let's do a half an inch, you'll be able to see it better. With my hera marker, I can simply score down the fabric. And just like when you're scoring paper, it makes it easier to fold. So I've got a perfect half an inch seam there. So if, that was, if it was a quarter of an inch seam or I needed to fold that over twice, whoops, that went off a bit. Um, this is when you get your fingers too close to the iron when you're trying to hem it. But look how that just folds over perfectly. Then I can do that again. And then I've got my perfect hem. So it's a handy little tool. I think it's one of those tools that when you see things like this, maybe you've seen them in stores or on the website before and you think, no, I've never used that. But when you see how useful these things are, they become invaluable, these little tools. Right tools for the job. Always make the job better, make the job easier, and then make the job more, more accurate. Um, oh, now the wadding, excuse me, This is the two ounce wadding, so this is the one that you just saw. And it's a polyester wadding. So I wouldn't use this in a quilt that you're going to sleep under or a baby quilt or anything like that. But it is nice and thick if you're embroidering through it. If you're quilting through it, maybe you're making a wall hanging. Um, the stitches really sink into it because of its thickness. Um, I'd use this kind of thing behind the front of a cushion cover if I'm going to put any kind of applique or quilting or embroidery on it um, because it just gives that extra nice little bit of padding but it's not too it's thick but you can see it's fine you can see straight through it so it's going to be easy to sew through as well so I think you'll find that really useful it's only £3.99 um, for a square metre of that one that is such good value for money so again, we're stocking up on things like this when they're such low prices aren't they um, there, we've got some buttons for you. These are going already. I haven't even seen them yet. This is what happens when you go on the website, start shopping. Um, they're little tiny bees. So they're just nice little decorations, don't they? And that could be covering up a wonky stick, uh, stitch, um, or just adding a, a, a little bit of fun, a little bit of embellishment. You could actually use these as proper buttons with buttonholes because they're smooth around the edge as well. So not necessarily just for um, decoration. But they're really sweet. Bees are really popular. They say bees, bees are the new owls, I think. There's bee fabrics are, uh, are very popular. We've got bee fabrics on the show. Uh, and we've got some storage, bee storage for you as well. So again, just £2.99 is your price there. Just a little bit of fun. So, are you new to sewing? Or are you teaching the kids to sew, maybe? That, they'd make a fun project, wouldn't they? Just to decorate whatever it is they're making. So again, if you've got any questions, so, oh, if you have any requests, do come along. We, we endeavour to please. <laughs> so that's the bee buttons. Um, we've got some sprays for you as well. These are, like I was saying about the marking tools, things that you really need to have in your sewing room. And another thing that when you see them, and there's so many different ones of these sprays, we've got 505, 404, 606, there's a 202, I think there's a 707. It, it can be a little bit bewildering, what on earth do they all do? The 505 is the spray that I use more than anything. 
This is a repositionable spray adhesive. It washes out of your fabric and it will lose its tackiness after a while. But that's like pins in a can. So I'll use it most of all for things like applique. I know you can use your heat and bond and things like that. But I just find this really easy to use and quick. So I'll give it a, I'll give it a spray on the mat down here. So I'm just spraying over the back and then I can put my applique piece in place. But then if I change my mind, I can lift it up. It doesn't leave anything sticky on here and I can move it around. And I'm saying pins in a can because if I was pinning around a piece of applique, you'd never get a, a smooth line when you're removing pins all the time. And this holds everything flat all over, not just in the areas where the pins are. And it's an awful lot quicker than basting or, or, or tacking as well. If you are a quilter, there is absolutely no reason why you can't use your spray to make a quilt sandwich. So that's going to hold all of your layers together before you sew. So no bent safety pins necessary when you've got a spray. No removing or sewing in tacking stitches, taking out tacking stitches. That's going to hold everything nice and flat. And it's it's still it's repositionable still, so that's not going to glue permanently. Um, sprays that are designed for use with fabric are important to use when you are sewing because they'll be easy to sew through and they're not going to gunk up your sewing machine needles. So that's a really important point. So don't worry about spraying and then sewing through it. So that's your 505. Again, I, I use these so often. I actually buy huge cans of them and I get through quite a few of those as well. But I would say that the majority of projects that I use will involve the 505 at some point. Then we've got the 404. 404 is a different kettle of fish. Now, although it'll say on the packaging that it is a, um, a paper spray, if you're spraying patterns and you want to keep them um, on your fabric, then this is going to be the one to use. Now, this doesn't wash out. Um, so it doesn't leave sticky residue behind or anything. It's not sticky. It's not going to attract the dust, but it doesn't actually wash out. But this will stick paper to walls without damaging the wall. So you can put posters up with it. You could spray your pattern pieces and, and stick them to the wall to keep yourself nice and organised if that's how you're going to use them. So and it can stick practically anything to anything. Um, so yes for fabrics, yes for papers. Um, you can stick paper onto wood, you can stick it onto glass. It's a, again a really useful um, spray. It's repositionable as you can see, so again you can take things off, you can put them back on. If you're sticking things to a painted wall you're not going to um, leave grease marks behind because that's what it's been designed to do. Um, plants? I wouldn't put, put it on my plants. And I just saw a picture of a leaf there, I just wondered what that was. Um, so that's your, that's your 404. And then finally here is your grippy spray. And this one you can use with your plastic templates and acrylic templates. So if you have a template like, like this one, which is one of mine from the Bilderbug book, um, there's no pinning with templates, obviously, because it's a plastic template, um, but they can slip occasionally on your fabrics. So with this type of template, you'd need to hold it down, draw around the lines, and you need to draw really accurately because that's going to be your pattern piece. But when you put your spray on the back of it, th uh, this is genius, this spray because it doesn't feel sticky. You wouldn't know that anything had happened on there. But when you put it now on your fabric, it's not going to move. So it hasn't stuck to the fabric. It hasn't left any residue on the fabric. It's just simply prevented this from moving. It doesn't feel tacky on here. And again, it's not going to attract dust and things like that. You can still see through the template, but it's just stopped it slipping altogether. So unlike, I mean, you could use a 404, it's going to stick to the fabric, but this doesn't. It literally sticks to the, the plastic template and stops it from moving. So that could be for um, any of your rulers. You know, some rulers like the creative grids that we're going to see shortly um, in, one, in the third hour, I think it's 10 o'clock hour, um, will have um, grippy bits on the bottom anyway. But if your rulers don't, then that's ideal for you. And they can just... It's, 
just, it's just so cold you can't feel it or anything. You would, you would not know that it was there, but it works. So that's your grippy. Now I showed you the, um, the two ounce wadding earlier. We've got a four ounce for you as well. So this is thicker. And it's denser. Let's take it out so I can show you. So you saw with the, with the two ounce how you could see through that. You can barely see through this one at all, so it's a lot more solid. Um, and it's heavier. So if you're bag making this, it's not a really stiff um, wadding, um, but it's nice and thick. So it's still easy to sew through. You won't need to trim your seam allowances or anything like that. Um, but it does give a little bit of rigidity, a little bit of sturdiness to your work. Maybe you're making things like um, play mats um, or outdoor cushions or picnic mats and things like that. It's, it's nice and squashy and bouncy. And at £5.99, it's an awful lot more affordable. So, but it is polyester, remember, so don't get it anywhere near heat. And don't boil wash it. <laughs> Okay, we'll do that down there. Now, I mentioned that these are really popular, and these have been. This is a lovely little collection. I like to be coordinated, I don't know about you. Have, have matching things. So, should you have a look at the bag, first of all? So, it's not, not just for sewing things. You've got a really nice drawstring bag um, that you can use for storage. You could keep your slippers in there, maybe all your hair bits and bobs, or your nail stuff. Um, kitchen bits and bobs, hang it at the back of the bathroom door. You've got a nice long drawstring handle on there as well, so you can hang that up um, to keep things nice and neat. And you've got these little bees all around there. And I, I love the organic look of this as well. It's like on um, a calico kind of fabric, it looks very natural. And delicate little bees look. And those are all made from felt. So it's quite it's quite sturdy. This is nicely padded and it's, um, it's got a, a frame inside the, the circular bits to help to keep its shape as well. So it's a nice sturdy bag too. So that's only £16.99. That would make a nice gift as well, wouldn't it? Maybe fill it full of sewing goodies. Or you can fill it full of matching bits and bobs. So you get your buttons, you've got a bee fabric. How about ooh, an exploding box? In here, you have your pin cushion in the centre, you've got your scissors, your tape measure, your quick on pick, needle threader, and you've got some threads as well. So it's like, a, it's like an emergency sewing box or a repair box. And these are all included as well. Obviously, you can add some more bits and bobs if you need to. But this all closes over. Whoops, lids go on. And that's really stylish. And then to complete your set, you've got the beehive pin cushion. Be rude not to, really, wouldn't it? And these have actually all been hand embroidered. So there's a lot of detail in those. And it's got a nice sturdy base on there as well. So it's a, it's a very stabbable pin cushion. So that's £9.99. But I think you'll agree they make a lovely collection. Um, oh, now then. We've got, we had a wrong price. Have to correct ourselves for the hexagon box. It's £19.99. And that's including all the bits that were inside it, remember? So I'll just show you again. All of those, so you're getting the threads and the tape measure and the scissors and extra storage space and you've got your, your seam rip or your quick and pick, whatever you call it, and you've got your um, needle threader there as well. So, oh, we, this is an early bird. It was an early bird, which is normally supposed to last for a whole day. Still there. So you're making a couple of pounds saving. Um, while we are here, let's take a look at those bee buttons again. I'm going to open them up and show you. Oh, that should come. You know, when we're looking for things to fill our time these days. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that was five minutes. Look at these. What impresses me is the amount of detail again in them. You can see all the little veins on their, um, on their wings. So they've got a small shank on them. These are be nice on, um, on cardigans, children's clothing. And there's four, eight, 12 of those little bees all together. And they're only £2.99. I just think they're so cute. I think they look lovely on knitwear. Um, if, you're, if, if you just want something to accent, to embellish, they're not too big. They're all rounded, so if you are using them as buttons, not decorations, then they're not going to snag on anything. But I just think they're really cute. So again, if you've got a wonky stitch, if you just want to add a little bit of fun, um, a little bit of a, a quirky element, then I think those are going to be perfect. So maybe it's going to be on a, on a sun hat or on a bag or on a belt or on a headband. A lot of us making headbands with buttons on the sides at the moment. Why not have a couple of bees on there? Um, but I just love the detail on them. They're little stripy bodies. I love the price actually, it's £2.99. I think that's such good value for money. And another one of those things that you're just going to have in your stash. And when you just want to add a fun element to an item that you're making, just add a, add a little bee on there. Nice, nice size on those as well. They're not too big. So 12 of those for your £2.99. Remember anything you want to order, you can have a look on the website. I've got loads on there now, um, which is sewingstreet.com. So when you go on there, you'll actually be taken to Jewelry Maker's website. So don't be confused. Uh, we are there on the homepage um, at the moment while we're just having our own website built. And you'll see all the products that we have in the shows for you this morning underneath the, the video. Um, but then as you scroll down, or you can go into the chapters, you can take a look at everything else that we have available for you. So if you go into Shop Our Catalogue, you can take a look at all of the books and the patterns, um, the fabrics that we have, um, the tools, the sewing machines and overlockers. So you can see we've got quite a wide range of products there for you to have a shop around. And I think that's pretty good considering that we've, we're quite a new company. We've only been going for, is it, are we two months old yet? Something like that. We're not very old. We're only youngsters here at Sewing Street. Mm -hmm. Right, pop you back up there, pop you there, and you there, and we're staying with bees because we've got our navy fabric. I'm going to open this so you can see how much you're getting. 100% cotton again, really dark navy in the ground colour, and then you've got those very stylish bees. And it's only £4.99, now that's for half a metre. If you wanted a metre of fabric, just order two units and it'll come to you in one piece. So what are you going to make with that? I know we've brought you this before in shows um, and I'd love to know what you have in mind when you see fabrics like this. Maybe something for the garden, are you going to make some seat covers or cushions for, um, for your garden furniture or maybe tablecloths, are you going to use these as embellishments, are you going to fussy cut them out, are you going to quilt them, what are you going to make with them? I think they'd make really nice things for the garden, kneeling pads, storage boxes, really pretty fabric. You could, it's 100% cotton, you could if you wanted to use this for dressmaking projects. It's a rose and hubble fabric, so you know you've got quality there as well, and it's a poplin, so you've got a, um, a dressmaking kind of weight, which means it has a really nice drape to it. So if you're making little girls pinafore dresses or aprons or a simple skirt with an elasticated waist, You've got a really fun fabric there. And then, of course, you can embellish it with your bee buttons. Mm -hmm. So, again, £4.99. Apparently, we're eight weeks old. So, just a couple of months. It feels like we've been there for ages, doesn't it? So, £4.99 for half a metre. Remember, they do come joined up if you wanted to order more than one of those. So, is anyone... I don't think anybody's messaged in yet, have they? Oh, well, they have. We've got an Andrea. Hi, Andrea. Just, hi Debbie, thanks for the tip about using a grippy spray and a ruler. I have one ruler that isn't a Creative Grids one and it annoyingly slides all over the place when I'm trying to use it. That, that's perfect for you, Andrea, and it lasts for ages as well, you don't actually need very much. Spray it away from your sewing machine, sew on a mat or something like that. But it's just, it's just really clever how you can't feel it, it's not sticky, it's just, it's just weird how it works, but it does work. Um, 
Right, we've got the details for you for the Hexy Bee pot. Remember, this was an early bird, and uh, we, we kind of got the price stuck at, at £17.99. And it's still there at £17.99. So you're saving £5 off the usual. And in here, you've got your threads, you've got your tape measure, you've got your quick and pick a pair of scissors, a needle threader. I'm not sure if you get the two pins that are in the centre. <laughs> That's very generous of us if, if you do. And the whole thing just folds away. And the lid goes on. Clever idea, isn't it? Um, so that's a previous early bird that just got stuck at a low price. Um, today's early bird is about to sell out. So if you weren't with us at eight o'clock, uh, we've still got a few left. Um, £19.98 your price and you're getting 16 fat quarters altogether. So there's two of the bundles in pastel rainbows for £19.98. That's a saving of £6 off the usual price. And that's just to say thank you for being there nice and bright and early with us. We're going to give you a, a bargain item. But they do tend to sell out and that's going to be no different today. Right, let's take a look. And more gift ideas for you or brightening up your sewing room maybe with our rather trendy, rather snazzy leopard print sewing box in here. We've got a tray which is removable. This could be for jewellery or again for nail varnishes and things like that. It doesn't have to be just for sewing. In the lid at the top, you've got a, um, a pin cushion and there's a little pocket there as well. So lots of storage space. And this is all nicely padded. It fastens over the magnetic snap. It does have a handle on the back as well, so it's easy to carry. But it's just a nice little storage idea. What That would make a lovely gift if you filled it, maybe. Because... Even if you don't sew, there will be occasions when you need pins, safety pins, when you're going to need needles, when you're going to need scissors um, and threads. So even if you're not a dressmaker or a quilter, um, this is like your emergency box. Actually, you could use it as a first aid box. That would be a rather snazzy one, wouldn't it? So again, that's £16.99 is your price there. It's even finished off with like, lace around the edge. Lace and leopard print. What do we like on a Tuesday morning at, at Sewing Street? We've got different choices for you, though. We have a spotty. I like this one. I like the sloth on the top. And the colour, actually. I think it's a really lovely colour. It's like a, a duck egg blue with an embroidered sleepy sloth. And on the inside, again, you've got your removable tray, little pin cushion, and a pocket to keep your bits and bobs in. That's £24.99. And again, that's removable. So you don't have to use it as a sewing box if you've got any other ideas as to what you'd like to use it for. Morning, Dawn. Dawn says morning, everyone. Morning. What are you doing today, Dawn? Are you sewing? Is it going to be a sunny day today? It was quite nice this morning as I came over. So you're going to sit in the garden if you have one, go sit on the balcony, take advantage of your hours, exercise and get some sunshine. Um, more sloths, but this is printed sloths as opposed to the embroidered previous one. And it's mustard spotty on the inside, again with the removable tray. And this is part of the collection with the mats and the ironing board, which we'll show you later on. So if you like um, a coordinated look, then we've got other bits and bobs in this range for you. So that begins £24.99. So as promised, we've got the large mat. This is A3 in size. So you've got the A3 cutting mat um, on this side in inches and half inch increments. And then on this side, you have an ironing mat. These are so handy. I have a little ironing mat at the side of my sewing machine with my prim iron. It folds back on itself as well, so you've got a nice flat surface. Um, but it means that if I'm just pressing a little seam open, I don't have to go and put the iron on, which is in the west wing. It takes me half an hour to get there. Uh, wait for the big iron to heat up and then come back. It's there all the time and it's really handy, so I don't even have to get off my stool um, if I want to do a little bit of ironing. But this is, this is a nice size for pressing seams open as well. You can pin into it if you wanted to. But it also makes a nice... Um, lap tray so if you're if you're sewing on your knee you've got something nice and sturdy 
to, to put your bits and bobs on. You can put a cup of tea on there, be careful. Um, and it means it's nicely padded underneath the, from the ironing board side, so that's going to be comfortable in your knees as well. So it's got handles, it fastens over so you can hang it up and it's portable. So if we're ever allowed to go to workshops again, then you've got something that you can carry around. And it's got sloths all over it. <laughs> now, when we do sell out, it's debatable if we can get this one back again. So if you've seen them before, sloths in jumpers. <laughs> um, be a good idea to get hold of it now while we have them. And this is the A4 version. So it's slightly different, this one. So you've got your cutting mat. You could iron on the outside, but it's not an ironing mat per se. But on this side, you have, come here, feels like sandpaper. And you could, but you, you wouldn't. Um, but this is grippy again. So if I take, Oh, do you know, so organised. Here we go. If I'm organising my patchwork pieces, I can arrange them on here and they don't fall off. <laughs> Daily tip it upside down. Um, so you can keep everything in place. These are obviously rather large. You've got smaller pieces. Um, and then this covers over to keep everything nice and flat when you're transporting everything. It's a little bit like, um, my mum used to do jigsaws quite a lot and she'd have um, a board with a similar thing over the top to keep all the jigsaw pieces in place while she, you know, she moved it and did something else. So it's a similar kind of idea, but that's really grippy. So things aren't going to you know, move around on there at all. Um, and that's only £14.99. That's really useful as well. And of course it's part of your collection. Nice to have everything latching, isn't it? Okie doke. Um, I'm going to give you a reminder, actually, of the storage case with embroidery threads. So these are for use with um, an embroidery machine. Or, of course, if you're free motion embroidering on your sewing machine. There are 50 spools of thread in 50 colours. Um, there's 500 metres on each one of those spools. So you can never have too many embroidery threads. You know what it's like if you've got an embroidery machine. Um, you'll want to use all of the colours that are suggested for you in the designs. And you've got so many colours in here to choose from. So even let's just pick out the yellows and golds just to show you how many shades of yellows and golds you have. I will never get these back again, will I? That's going on to pink, I think. So, oh, they're a little bit orange. Could that be clusters of yellow? So that's, that's just all of the different shades of one tone. But you're going to use them all. Imagine the kind of sunrise that you can, you can make with all of those different colours. Amazing. So every one of these spools is full. Last time we brought this to you, we sold out. We've done a little bit of shopping around and price comparing and found this at £56. So you've got yourself a good deal here. And again, you'll, <laughs> you're going to have hours of fun trying to get them back in again. Look at all the different shades of pinks and reds that you've got as well. So if you were to go and buy individual spools of thread, it might go some to purple. Is that a pink? No, it's more purple. But you can see again all those different shades. If you're going to go into a store, I don't think you'd pick up all of those different shades because you think that's going to be a lot of money, isn't it? Um, but the thing is, you'll use them. It's like having a whole palette of, um, of threads. So when, you, when you're painting your picture, you've got the right shade there. Because, of course, with paint, you can mix them together and get lots of different shades. With threads, you can't do that. So you have to have all of those individual colours. And you've got them all here for just £49.99. That's... That's like a pound each. And that's not included in the box, which would cost you £10 anyway. So, that, how did they do this? <laughs> if you've got bored kids, just uh, tip, tip everything out and then ask them to rearrange it. They'll have hours of fun. They'll love you for it. Actually, there's a, there's a method. 
I see how it goes now. It doesn't take a genius to work that one out really, does it? So 50 threads, a pound each. It's a ridiculous value. And I like the way that the box is clear as well. So it's I you can identify where everything is. Go there. One missing there. I'm not taking these out ever again. <laughs> this is interesting TV, isn't it? Oh, Elaine's asked if um, if we're going to get what for dressmaking and quilting. Sorry, threads. Oh, yes, we are. Within the next couple of weeks, we will have threads for dressmaking and quilting as well. We're, we're building a power stash on the website as we speak. So, yes, we will do. Um, and you ask, we will certainly look for it. So if you do have any requests, can't guarantee that we're going to be able to satisfy everybody. But if you do have anything particular that you'd like to see on the shows, then um, drop us a line or, or put a post on Facebook and we shall endeavour. We shall do our best for you. Now, our... Seam ripper and grippy spray have been really popular. You've got to have a few seam rippers. Um, and this is a nice quality one. There was there's a little one, wasn't there? If you have um, the seam ripper that you've had free with your sewing machine, it'll probably be one like that, which is fine. And they're, tender, you know, they're really sharp. It's got its red dot and everything. There's nothing wrong with it. This has got a really nice handle on it. So it's going to be easier to use. If you do a lot of unpicking, um, we, we all do. Um, it's it's got a nice handle on it. These can tend to be a little bit a little bit mean, a little bit fiddly. Sorry, I know you're getting that with that, aren't you? But they are. But they are. Um, these are products that sell out so many times. It is consumable. You're going to need more than one of these because they do go blunt after a while. Um, you probably don't even notice, but you know, if, you've, if, if you're unpicking thick fabrics, I'm thinking buttonholes maybe, um, so not necessarily just for unpicking wonky stitches, um, you need a good quality um, seam ripper. And that's it, and it's only £2.99. Remember, with one PMP all day, you're only going to pay £3.95, even if you come back to us later on. That makes it more value for money, doesn't it? So if you, if you come back in a bit and you think, oh, I've bought that, paid three ninety five postage, I only want a pin, I only want to buy a packet of needles or those B buttons for £2.99, um, we're not going to charge you any more for your postage. That did have a little guard on it, so apologies, I've lost it. We'll find it when, uh, when we've gone. Um, that grippy spray, I think that's going to go. The grippy spray stops rulers from slipping. Um, I'll just show you again how it works. I have got spray on the back of this one already. But basically, you spray the wrong side of it. It doesn't feel tacky and sticky. It doesn't leave any kind of residue on your, um, on your fabric or on your ruler for that matter. But you're just going to give that a quick spray. You don't need very much. Pop it on the fabric and it doesn't slide. So previous... It was all over the place. Now it doesn't move. And there's less than 10 of those remaining now. Get a couple of them while you're there. But really useful. There's so many of these sprays around and you, you, you will find them so useful. Um, that won't go away either. That will stay there. That's going to last such a I mean, how many rulers have you got? It's going to last you such a long time. If you're using acrylic templates, it's going to work just as well. So if you don't have, I mean, you can get those little grippy, uh, like silicon pads can't you that stick but they they tend to raise your ruler off the work a little bit this keeps everything nice and flat and it works and again it doesn't leave it sticky i don't know how that works but there's there's no it doesn't feel any different but it's just stopped it slipping it's really clever so again it's six pounds and 99 pence for all of the 150 mil there for your 6.99 um the two ounce wadding sold out but we do have four ounce wadding. There's a square meter, so that's what you're getting. So certainly a nice size if you're making a play mat or something for the kids to play outside and on the lawn um, or a wall hanging. Again, it's, it's not breathable. I wouldn't use this if it was going to be a quilt that I'm sleeping under, but I, would, I do like to use a padding like this on um, 
maybe seat covers. You could use a couple of layers of that. That would be nice and nice and firm. Or behind um, cushions, uh, the front of cushions, particularly if you're embroidering or using a plique, because it's nice and deep. It makes the stitches really sink in. And you can see the thickness there. It's about a centimetre in depth. And it's quite solid. You can only just see through that. So it's only £5.99. It's, it's one of those things, if you've... If you're using your uh, maybe an heirloom batting, wadding, or however you call it, um, and you've got your wool and your cottons and your poly mixes, they can be quite expensive. So if I'm making something like a wool hanging or a cushion cover, I don't really want to use something that's going to cost too much. But at £5.99, you could make easily four floor cushion pads with this one. And I said, I just put it behind the fabric. So if I embroider, the stitches really sink in. Or you can save it for Christmas and just put it on your windowsill and make it look like snow. <laughs> right, again, £5.99. So two ounces sold, we've still got the four ounce. Early bird, that's now sold out as well. So that's going to that's gonna go down there. I reckon your B buttons are going to sell out. I think that one might sell out because that's still at an early bird price at £17.99. So having a busy morning this morning, aren't we? Oh, with the B fabric, that's going to go as well. And you've got two metres left. So if you phone up or go online and ask for four of these, you'll wipe us out. And it's only £4.99, 100% cotton poplin. It's a Rosen Hubble print and it's really lovely quality. And there's not very much left. So it's by the half a metre. Oh, we've got lots of fabrics coming up in the next hour. We have the extra wide backing fabric back in stock. We've got rainbow fabrics, but not a lot of stock. We've got, got lots coming up. Oh, and then the hour after, we've got the, um, the 720 sewing machine. So if you've got any questions about that, you know, if you've, if you've seen the shows before and thought, oh, well, I don't know, I want it to do this, but, but Debbie hasn't mentioned anything about that, um, drop me a line on Facebook. Um, Oh, hi, Amelia. Oh, we've had a... Oh, I do like a mess. I get all excited when you message in. It's like, you're really there, aren't you? Um, Morning, Debbie, said Amelia. I'm trying EPP for the first time and thoroughly enjoying it. I can sit outside and continue doing it whilst enjoying the sun. So glad a sewing programme is back on, on TV. Have a good day and stay safe. Thank you, Amelia. I love English paper piecing. It's one of those things that um, I... Um, once I get started, I can't stop. And it does, because I'm, I'm one of these people that when I start a project, I want to see it all the way through. So if I'm making a quilt, that's like days worth of work. So you won't see me. So I have to get it all done. But yeah, put some, a cat is directing next door, says put some cream on, sitting in the garden. She was doing EPP in the garden without some cream on. Or, or a low factor. She's a bit pink. Um, hi June. Uh, June says, morning Debbie, I love watching you, especially when you do the demos. Thank you. I've made a few cosmetic bags from your occasion bags book after watching your demo the other day. My demo the other day, that was on Sunday and you've made four. <laughs> oh, well done. Love to see your pictures, love to see what you've been making. And it's, it's really nice to have your company this morning. So 7.20 coming up at 10 o'clock. So any questions about that, keep them coming in now. Um, in the next hour, oh, we've got fabrics, we've got back in stocks, we've got books. Um, we've got some new rulers coming up later on for you as well. So I'm just, I'm going to bring all of this over. Um, so give me about five minutes and go and put the kettle on and I'll see you back here soon. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely.
And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, Drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan and I'm here to give you my top tips on how I go about enjoying my sewing experience. My first top tip, as everybody knows, rotary cutter safety. If you're not using it and it's not on the mat, that blade must be locked. Please be safe. My second top tip is always buy more fabric than you need. If you don't have it, it's always going to sell out. You're going to struggle to find it. And when you do, it's going to cost you a lot more than when you were going to buy it originally. So buy it all. You always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is Positive or negative, always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective, everybody has a different take on things, and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you. And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you, because they have helped me. For more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview channel 74, Sky channel of 670, otherwise follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street, where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hello there and welcome back. You're watching Sewing Street and uh, in this hour we have books and we've got some fabrics for you as well. Um, so let me take you through straight away because we've got lots to show you. Uh, Rainbow pastels. These have been so popular. We've got the brights coming up in just a second as well. 100% cotton fabric and really pretty tones. So it's similar in colours to the early bird that we sold out of in the previous hour. Um, and in here, one, two, three, four, five 
pieces, so two and a half meters all together for just £16.99. So they're half meter length and they're 112 centimeters wide. Another one of those stash busting um, products that you just you know, you're going to you're going to use so often. So if you were, if you saw the early bird and you thought, oh no, I want more than a fat quarter, you've got more than a fat quarter here, because in fact you've got two fat quarters in each one of those. Um, if I just open one up and show you how much you have. So if it's bias binding, if you're making summer outfits, that's the amount that you're going to get. Again, thinking cushion covers, quilting, borders, sashing. Um, really useful colours. So I, I know so previously with the um, with the fat quarters, but if you're using a pattern fabric, you normally pay more money for pattern fabric than you do plain. But if you put a plain with your fabric, it makes your pattern fabric pop and it makes your pattern fabric go that little bit further. So a plain fabric can save you money in the long run. So we've got a lovely lilac, a baby blue, a pretty in pink, a gorgeous green and a yummy yellow. All for £16.99. pence. Really lovely spring colour. And it's all Rose and Hubble, 100% cotton poplin for £16.99. Fabulous value. We have the bolds, but we don't have very many of these left now. So down to single figures, less than 10 of these now. We have the bright red, yellows, pink, greens, purple, royal, and navy, and that's £23.99 for all of them. There's three and a half metres in total. So you're going to make rainbow themed things to put in your window. You can make rainbow curtains out of these to hang in your window. I think they're lovely to see. Um, I nipped out to the supermarket yesterday and drove past, um, there was one house where they'd painted sheets and hung them all on the hedges outside, just rainbows everywhere. So it does put a smile on your face. That, that's the intended purpose for rainbows at the moment. Very significant for a lot of us. And, um, and it really works. It does put a smile on your face, doesn't it? Or maybe this is going to be another one that's just building up your stash. Um, but at £23.99, that, that, that is such great value for me. Three and a half metres for £23.99 is fabulous value. So it's a, it's a good time to stock up, isn't it? Well, we still can. <laughs> um, and we, we're good at delivering at the moment. We're on limited staff at the moment, but we are getting the deliveries out to you as soon as we possibly can. So thank you for being there and thank you for bearing with us. And we'll try and stay here for as long as we can. Bringing you great deals every day, which is certainly what we have here. So again, you've got bright pillar box red, lovely bold sunshine yellow. And we've got the pink, the fuchsia pink. The green's like an emerald green and a deep purple, lovely royal blue, and then the deepest of navy. All for £23.99. Now we have extra wide backing fabric, which you've found on the website already. I shall, I shall try and show you how big this actually is. So this is by the half metre, so if you're backing a quilt, you're going to need a little bit more than that. You've got lots of colours for you, so this is the turquoise and it's just covered in squiggles. This is the one that you've been ordering already on the website. And if you look at that and think, well that's not extra wide, it's actually twice the width. This is folded in half at the moment. So. I shall try and show you how big this actually is. I'm just getting a pin. Because over here, oh, there's pins in it already. We have a mannequin. So let's put that in there. And this is actually 112 inches. which is just the size of our set. Yeah, the, the, this is what we have to work in. Tiny, but yeah, 112 inches. So when we say extra wide, <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think I've ever seen a piece of fabric as wide as this. That, that is surely super king size width. Amazing. Um, this is a good fabric as well of this kind of size. If you're 
making any kind of bedding. It doesn't just have to be for the back of a quilt. This could be for a duvet cover that you're making. Um, and why not matching curtains while you're there as well? But consider, considering how wide this is, it's not like I should have a little boat here, shouldn't I? <laughs> but considering the width for £8.99, isn't that great value for money? <laughs> there you go, you can have that. So that's the turquoise. <laughs> I'm not going to get all of them out like that. <laughs> oh, the, the greens are back in stock. So that sold out last time it was here. You could um, free motion embroider all over that, couldn't you? That could be your quilt. That's a lovely colour though, isn't it? It's bright, it's bold, it's fun. I'll open it up a little way so you can see the design. But again, if, that's a, if that is a play, might a play. I did it again. Oh, I just I do this posh thing every now and again. I don't know what happens. It's play mat. Um, you've got you've got the grass there, haven't you? I love the idea of embroidering all over there. I think there'd be loads of fun. But a really fun lime, citrus, bold green that one. So curtains, bedding. You have your whole house covered in squiggles. There's so much fabric there. So that's the green. Oh, you could go for the cream. Yeah, mate, it's a pair of elasticated lounge pants, we call them. Um, you could make with those. This is the natural. So you've got the, the creamy colour in the background and the squiggles are all in a like a golden colour on this one. Again, it's half a metre. If you want to go for more than that, they just all come in one big piece. Big piece. <laughs> Then we have a navy. So a little, little bit more subtle, the navy. Your squiggles don't stand out quite as much because they're so dark. Remember, this is, again, 112 inches, not centimetres. Um, I, I couldn't, even, <laughs> couldn't even fit it on my tape measure this morning. We had to do it twice. So big. Yeah, that would make nice curtains, wouldn't it? Or lining for curtains. Okay. Oh, and remember those embroidery tests that we had earlier? You could go to town on these, couldn't you? Just free motion all over them. There's your pink. So a pale pink with a dark pink squiggle on the pink one. Again, £8.99. And then finally, you've got your white and white. So if you can, if you can see that it is actually a, a white print. White print on white fabric. So you've got a nice white on white again for backing fabric for a quilt would be absolutely perfect. At eight pounds ninety nine, great value for money. So if you'd like to order, remember, you can go to the website, which is sewingstreet.com, or you can order on the, um, on the phone lines, which is 0800 001 4433. Right, there we go. And if you just joined us and want to see how wide this is, this is what 112 inches looks like. It, it is literally the size of our little set here. We could have a huge backdrop, couldn't we? <laughs> 100 percent cotton, so wide, honestly. That surely a, a quilt, um, a bed quilt wouldn't be as wide as that. There's so much there. All 100 percent cotton. Really busy, really busy for this one. You're loving the turquoise one. What are you going to make with it? The huge amounts of fabric, what are you going to make with it? You're just going to wrap yourself up like a toga. <laughs> so everybody in the family can have matching outfits, couldn't they? All, all with the same fabric. <laughs> so we've got lots of colours for you to choose from. Remember, you've only got one p and of £3.95 all day if you wanted to go for more than one, or if you come back later and you think, oh, I should have gone for that pink. Should have had the navy, should have had the natural, should have had the green. 
and lots of these are back in stock again so really nice to have those but we know how popular that those are going to be because you were ordering them before we even came to air this morning that's what happens when we've got everything on the website you find things and you order them and good for you because you've got hold of yours you may have missed out on that last time around the final fabric in this colorful selection is the spotty fabric again this is by the half meter It's nice to have a patterned fabric or a printed fabric on lining, I think. Whether you're lining a bag or if you're lining a jacket. So a little bit of interest, but not that's going to argue with the print. So maybe you've got a floral print or you're, you've got something that's quite plain and you just wanted to add that little bit of colour and a little bit of interest. And it's only £3.99, that is such a good price. It's another Rosen Hubble, so it's cotton poplin, poplin being a lighter weight of fabric than quilting cotton, so it's perfect for dressmaking. That would make a pretty little girl's dress, wouldn't it? Or a blouse for yourself for summertime. So, and you can never go wrong with a spot. You like a spot. So we have the blue. So it's nice fabric to sew with as well. I think that's important with the fabric. It feels nice in your hand. And if you are going to wear this, um, it, it's just, it feels cool next to the skin. So it's lightweight and it's breathable and it's perfect for summer outfits. Uh, this is the Aqua, again at £3.99. Then we have a coral, not coral pink. I'm calling this one Salmon with the white spot. Again, cotton poplin, lovely quality, rose and hubble, half a metre. They come joined up if you order more than one. And then finally, they go really well together as well, don't they? Just those colours, I think, just in, in square blocks would look really nice on a, on a child's quilt. So this is the pastel turquoise, again at £3.99. Ruth has asked a question. Ask away, Ruth. Um, is quilt backing fabric the same weight as quilt fabric? That's the same weight. It's not thinner at all. It's it's the same weight. That's good, isn't it? You'd expect it to be a little bit a little bit finer. It's not. Okay, so we've got all of your rainbows. We've got your spots. Uh, we've got a couple of books over here for you as well. Um, so this is um, when the gardeners take two fat quarters. So all of the projects in here take two fat quarters or less of fabric. You don't have to go out and buy specific fat quarters for the book. They're just smaller pieces of fabric. So these are great projects for a beginner sewer or maybe a gift for somebody that you know that's interested in sewing. So all achievable, simple projects that don't use up very, very much fabric. We were going to bring you two fat quarters gifts, but we just sold out of that one. So these are all projects for the home. And I'm going to explain just what a fat quarter is. Such a good idea. So there's a section about stabilizers, threads, fabrics, trim, um, trimmings, waddings, battings, tools that you're going to need, an explanation of sewing machine feet. Those are those markers which we had on the previous show. And then on to the different techniques that you're going to use. So these are um, skills that you can learn that you can use on other projects as well. So finishing seams, you'll be doing that in dressmaking, um, creating buttonholes, dressmaking, maybe decorative buttonholes on cushion covers, a little bit about patchwork and quilting. Free motion embroidery and applique, and these are all techniques that you're going to use in the projects throughout the book. Adding trims, so it's kind of hard to make things personal to your project as well. And then these are the projects. So you've got your cafetier cosy, you've got some um, mug rugs there as well. Your placemat, that's a nice sampler for um, if you've got a new sewing machine because you can use all of the different decorative stitches to see what they look like and then make a placemat out of the fabric you've used. 
Then we've got the four patch coasters, so a very simple patchwork technique which you can then use for larger projects if you so wish. A little bit about chain piecing. So it's a good starting point, or if you wanted um, quick projects, if you've got a big project on the go at the moment, then I just want to make something really quick. If you're making things um, as gifts for later on in the year, maybe that's going to be something to keep you occupied over the next few weeks. Get yourself organised and even think about Christmas presents. Right. Then there's your buttons. Button cushion cover, sorry. Um, top tech pillows. <laughs> so there's something for everybody in here, isn't there? Summer slippers. Storage baskets. I like storage things. I have lots of storage baskets at home. You've got an apron. Again, useful for this time of year in the garden, but all year round um, in your sewing room. A notebook cover. And in the back, you've got patterns there as well. Now that is just £9.99. And again, I'm, I'm thinking giftware or if you just need um, a little bit of inspiration. If you don't know where to get started. If you've got fat quarters left over and you don't know what to do with them, what do you do with their small pieces of fabric? Then this is going to be an ideal inspirational book for you. And Wendy, I've known Wendy for a long, long time. She's a lovely lady. And she is an expert sewer. She specialises in dressmaking. She always wears a fabulous dress whenever you see Wendy. And she also has amazing shoes. I don't know how she walks in them. I can walk in amazing shoes for a, a few minutes, but she'll spend the whole of a, a show at the NEC tottering around in some crazy bright coloured shoes. <laughs> so again, just two fat quarters. In fact, a lot of these take a lot less than just two fat quarters. And that's £9.99 for your book. The, oh, oh, Ruth's message back again. Hi, Ruth. Oh, she says, thank you, everyone. <laughs> We're keeping her sane. You're keeping me sane, I tell you. Um, this is um, Learn to Sew in 30 Minutes. This is by Debbie von Grabler Cruzier, another very nice lady. Um, and we've got some very simple projects in there as well. That's Debbie. So... If you are new to sewing, and then this is going to be ideal for because it takes you through, you know, the tools and everything that you need all the way through to um, reading patterns and then making projects as well, like the koala bear. <laughs> I like the variety of, of projects that um, the authors are using as well. So some of them are fun and some of them are practical. Um, oh, a little bit about die, cu die cutting as well. Coasters. So you see the very, very simple projects through to things that are maybe a little bit more um, complicated. There's your pink cushion. She's even got something for a dog. What else have you got? Oh, I like the rope bowl. Um, that, here we go, look. That's a really nice technique and it makes a really sturdy bowl. Um, and you can either, you can wrap fabric around them like Debbie has here, um, or you can um, just use the rope, a washing line or piping cord or anything like that. Work really well with those. Um, and then you can make little matching coasters as well. You see some amazing rope bolts. If you have a look on Pinterest and places like that, you see jugs with handles on them and all kinds of things. So clever, clever technique. That's quite fun to do as well. So that's how to do that. Um, the fabric tray. So again, they're all simple projects, but you're learning something with each one of them. So there's some important skills to learn. The pillow, oh, the cloud, the cloud pillow. It's a happy cloud on one side and it's a sad cloud on the other side. So we, we keep it this way. Sorry, sad cloud. We don't want you. We want happy cloud. And that's using free motion embroidery. So again, Debbie will tell you what you're going to learn from each one of these. 
autumn leaf garland that's here as well and that's working with felt but it's um it, it's a technique of the applique and cutting around the shape that you're going to learn from that little whoops see what she says you oh die cutting for that one die cutting and mastering your scissor cutting this one here as well so another little bit of free motion embroidery writing with thread raggy applique so that's like a raw edge of applique and transferring patterns the patterns are in the back of the book for these there's our koala again but we've got popped holders so this is there really is something for everybody in here that's a little pot holder with a cactus on the front so you're going to learn whole cloth quilting and channel diamond quilting and how to print your own fabric so i should show you how to print the cactus on the front and joining interfacing on that one oh we've seen that upstairs as well tablet case there's a the little flowers bag charms here as well so simple projects but projects where you're going to learn something that's just about actual size there huh? so there's your patterns that you need again look sad cloud hmm. so 12 pounds and 99 is your price I, I think that is fantastic value for money um and simple to follow simple to use learn to sew in 30 minutes by debbie von grabler crozier um she's written lots of bag books has debbie she's a very talented sewer hmm um gift idea you know somebody that's learning to sew maybe you're teaching somebody how to sew that's going to be a great addition to your library right we have more printed fabrics that are exclusive to sewing street and these are something quite unique because when we're talking fat quarters, this is in effect four fat quarters, um, but which way around are we? There we go. But they're bigger than your regular fat quarters. So this is EKUU72. And you've got like a modern twist on a paisley print. But the fat quarters normally in inches are about 22 inches wide. These are 27 and a half by 19 and a half so they're a lot bigger than you would normally expect you can use that as one big sheet of fabric if you wanted to or maybe fold it in half um, to make a cushion cover plenty big enough to make pillowcases with these maybe if you had some plain fabric on the back um, to make this go a little bit further lovely teals and deep pinks in color 100 percent cotton printed in the uk and exclusive to sewing street 14 pounds and 99 pence is your price these, I said before when we brought you these, they look like Zentangle. They look like one of those um, projects that you sit and doodle and draw lines in and colour them all in. Um, but it's a, a, it's a classic little paisley, but it's got a really modern look to it. And the detail on these is so much. The print is so fine, which again is a sign of uh, good quality printers. But I love the colours. That, that teal is so pretty, it's so fresh. So just with the white on the background. And then we've got the swirls. Got so much movement in it. And the large paisley leaves there as well. So four huge pieces, 27 and a half by 19 and a half inches these are. They're, they're really big. That's only 14 pounds and 99 pence. We've got collections for you as well. You've probably seen that on, on the website already. Um, so you can have other matching pieces other matching prints to go with them right <clears throat> so lots of you've got these already what have you made so this again is four fat quarters same colorways but slightly different print 
Um, so this one is K U U U U U U K U U U eighteen. Be nice for kitchen wares. So maybe you're going to be making matching oven gloves, oven mitts, pot holders, um, the ties that go around the top of your tea towels and then you Velcro them to your oven. It could be something to cover up your Kenwood Chef or your toaster. You could be making little cafe curtains for your kitchen window. So lots of things that you can make to match. You can make cushions, those little bolster cushions that go in the middle of your back when you've got uncomfortable dining room chairs. It could be placemats and trims around a tablecloth. You could be covering a lampshade. What about um, in the bedroom? You've got storage items that you can make or storage boxes that you could make to go on your dressing table to keep your makeup and cotton wool buds and things like that in. Um, it could be storage in the, in the bathroom. A huge drawstring bag to hang on the back of the door. Um, or a laundry bag, maybe. One of those laundry bags that's divided into the colours and the whites. It's very, up, very upmarket, that. <laughs> or what about the conservatoire? So seat covers again and cushion covers would be lovely. Little tablecloths and mats and coasters. So much you could make with these. Or you're sewing for outside. So again, play mats for the kids or picnic blankets, um, tablecloths. Maybe it's going to be a little lap quilt to keep your knees warm when it gets to, was it windy yesterday? It looked, it looked lovely, so myself, my husband, my husband and I, our granddaughter and the dog, all trolled off for a five mile walk. I didn't tell him it was five miles. <laughs> and we, we were driving, we were, we were just in the middle of nowhere, We'd, we live in the countryside, I know there's nobody there. Um, and then the postman drove past, gassed the postman, and he pulled over and he said, where are you walking? And I said, we're going to walk right down to the end there, then we're going to go under the bridge, then we go round by the quarry, then we come back through the woods around that way. And he says, um, Kara says, yeah, it's a couple of miles walk. And Gaz was like, it's more than a couple of miles. So I might have exaggerated or underestimated how far we actually walked. He did get blisters, he wasn't best pleased. But he's wearing wellies. You don't go for a five mile hike with wellies on. But I couldn't really say when we left, could I? Oh, we were walking five miles. <laughs> right. This is similar again. So again, you've got your, um, your four fat quarters, but this is from a different collection. So this is KEUU41. And we're in the garden. So this is June showers. We have butterflies and raindrops and smoke coming out of chimneys of houses and wellies with flowers on them. We've got rain clouds and apples and butterflies and leaves and vines and tulip buds and carousels and umbrellas. And there's lots, lots of detail in this. Um, and it's a nice fun colour as well, isn't it? So if you're... English paper piecing, you can be fussy cutting your hexagons with little wellies all over them. I like a small print for things like that as well. The, um, the orange one you can make into borders, so that would be quite nice. Maybe over the top of, um, of one of the finer ones like that. This is um, tiny little flowers and watering cans. Again, so much detail in those. And then and over here you've got your rain class, there's a bee, um, little houses, there's a ladybird, we've got apples, we've got flowers, we've got trees, we've got mushrooms, we've got trees that look like lollipops and raindrops all in the background. And then down here we have Rows of trees, which again you could cut into wavy borders if you wanted to with that one. And again, that's fourteen pounds ninety-nine. You get an awful lot with these. They're big pieces of fabric. And again, exclusive to Saint Street, all printed and designed in the UK. Yeah, so. Don't, don't worry about shopping around and comparing prices because you won't find them anywhere else. 
Here's another one. So this is the same print but a different colorway. So this is HS UU07. So again, just, just the same prints but a completely different color. So a, a little bit brighter, a little bit fresher, I think, than the previous one personally. I like that one. And again, that's £14.99. So have a closer look at this one. <clears throat> A lot, isn't there? Like a tablecloth, just as it is there. So we've got flowery wellies and raindrops and uh, and watering cans, and then as you come down, this is the one with the ladybirds and the bugs and um, the bumblebees. It does look very different in different colour to the previous one, doesn't it? And then on this side, these really stand out. You can see there's a lot clearer on this one. So you've got your tiny little watering can. Even the watering can's got a heart on it. And the little flowers. And they're all outlined as well. So you've got the little apple and the individual leaves there. And then wavy borders with trees. And leaves. All for £14.99. Um, oh, Alison, hi, Alison. Oh, the embroidery machines. She's asking about embroidery machines. Are we going to be bringing any in? Hopefully, within the next couple of weeks. So we haven't got a date confirmed as yet, but hopefully it won't be too long. So watch this space. Uh, there we go. I love social media um, and being able to talk to you immediately like that and answer any questions that you have, like now. If you've got any, um, I am on... Um, sorry, I'm on Sewing Street TV on Facebook page. I'm just reading a message from Sue. Um, who's just found out how to message in. She loves the panels that Sewing Street is doing. Can't wait to see the creative grid. So, morning, Sue. So, come and send us a message for whatever reason. If you just want to say, hello, I'm here. What are you doing? Are you sewing? Are you inside? Are you outside? Are you, are you on, your, on your smartphone? Or are you watching us on TV? What, what are you doing? This one is TPUU27. I love these colours. I think these are so classy. Musters are really kind of in colour at the moment, isn't it? If we bring you anything of these golden ochre kind of tones, it sells out. Um, and the, the colours are so rich. If you've got any of the, um, the PU in the mustard, it's exactly the same colour. So you could use these as lining on a faux leather looking bag. But these are, these are my lovely cushion covers. I, I think home wears with these. Or if you're making, oh, can you make a lovely bag? So you've got enough probably to make three or four tote bags out of that, complete with lining as well. And it's a nice sturdy fabric. So let me show you. I folded it all up. Now I'm all, all ahead of myself. Come and have a look at this one. So we've got gorgeous blooms and delicate leaves and tiny little ditzy flowers over here as well. But it's the colours for me. I think that could be any print you like. Um, I just love the colours. I love mustards and greys together. And mustards, greys and teals all together just look amazing. I think it looks really classy. It looks very sophisticated. And you could, you could cut these out if you want to do a bit of fussy cutting. If you want to do applique, that would make a lovely applique piece. Even on top of the teal would look nice if you cut that up and sewed it on there. And then these tiny little flowers, I'd use that as a background um, or a lining, I think, for that one. All cotton, all exclusive to SS. We have more. Right. The grippy sprays, we've only got five left. So if you wanted to get hold of that, I should do it now. I've had lots of sellouts today, haven't I? Right. 
So we've got lots of backs in, back in stocks and we've got lots of sellouts as well today. This is the um, same colour palette but a slightly different print. So here, come on, there we go. This is FPUU03. Gorgeous colours. Aren't they? They just look so sophisticated. A sophisticated colour palette, I'm thinking, with this one. So, similar colours to uh, the previous one, but different print, so they go together perfectly. And if you go for the two, remember we've only got one PMP of 3.95 all day. So, tiny flowers here. Remember in the previous one, um, I'll just show you if I can find them really quickly. <laughs> she said really quickly. That was the previous one. So you've got the two, if you go for both of them, you've got the two colour options there. And... Oh, I folded this far too well. So this one, the previous one was the yellow background, now you're looking at the white background. Uh, previous one was white background here, now you're looking at the yellow background. And then that one was the teal in the previous one. So they go together really, really well. So if you can stretch to two, um, I think you're just going to find them really useful. And it's a nice way of buying fat quarters as well. Firstly, because they're huge. <laughs> And secondly, because the colours just go together so well. I, I think I put fabric flapper on my CV now. Do a lot of this. Wafting fabrics. Right. We haven't finished yet. So moving on to these beautiful deep plums. This is Copen Plum. Four huge fat quarters again. OPUU63, or item number if you wanted to order. Remember, it's sewingstreet.com. Um, if, you, if you're a bit fed up of me flapping at you, then uh, take a look on the website and you'll be able to see all of the fabrics that we have available for you there. So this is the same design, but a completely different colour. So I wouldn't go for the previous two with this one. Previous two together, yes, this one on its own. But really rich, the colour, isn't it? It's such a lovely deep, deep plum. And all of the detail, again, isn't lost. Little flowers there, the ditzy prints, the larger prints. Do you like the idea of kind of cutting those out? Fussy cutting around it and using it as a plique? All 100% cotton and exclusive. It is quite a workout. Five mile hike yesterday was quite easy con in comparison. <laughs> okay, we've got a different collection, similar idea. I like these colours though. This is Paisley Marmalade. So this is the same print as the first ones that we wafted at you. Um, but different colours. Whoa! So the, again, the greys, the greys and the, and the mustard colours, so popular. I love that grey and the white. It gives a very clean look, doesn't it? And those swirls, it's just like, oh, watching the wind. Watching, you can't see the wind, can you? Seeing the wind blowing um, like it was yesterday. We, we walked past um, a field, I, I think it's corn that's grown up, it's about that long at the moment, and as it was on the hill, it actually looked like something was running all over it, the way the wind was blowing it. It's really lovely to see. And we saw hares and so many sheep and lambs are under at the moment. Nice to be able to get out even for a short while, isn't it? So, we have, again, the, the little, little fish, um, the paisley design, the smaller one, and then the stylized paisley leaves, and then the swirls here, all in such beautiful colours. What are you going to make with them? This is another one where we had brought you um, a whole collection previously of, um, 
of fabric strips and fat quarters. So I'd love to see pictures of what you've been doing with them. I still think when, when any of these I look at, I'm thinking homewares, cushion covers and things like that. So if you've made something that's a bit different to what's in my mind, love to see it. All right. So let's open this one up. Same idea, so you've got four fat, very fat quarters. Remember, these are bigger than regular fat quarters. And we've got seashells. So if you'd like to order, it's RN UU05. That it almost looks like they've come out of one of those, like, I know they're not botanical, but science books. So deeper orange this time with a, a, a really good French navy background. So you've got skeleton outlines. We've actually got skeletons of the, um, of the shells. Interesting, isn't it? It's like a helter-skelter. And then your larger shells. And then you've got little clam shells there as well. Again, at £14.99p. And, One left, and then I'm going to go through them all again. <laughs> no, no. Let's be asking questions when we come back again. Finally, matching the previous one, but the colours are in different orders. Yeah, there's those. So again, you've got the fish, you've got the uh, skeleton outline. The print on the background is quite clever on this as well because it's actually printed to look like linen. You can see on the orange bit there. Um, the weave is actually printed onto the fabric, which is quite nice. And then you've got the pale teal and the dark blue with the clamshells at the bottom there as well. There you go. So again, if you go for the two together, they do complement each other very well. Okay, so those are your four. Um, I have before now kind of pleated these and done a pin tuck, so you've got a white piece down there, so you don't have to cut them all out if you don't want to. Um, now if you're making something like an apron, um, you could just make a seam across there and then cut it out so it looks like you've, you've joined two pieces together, but it's actually just one. Okay. Let's fold that up. There. Patricia's asked a question. Hi, Patricia. Um, could we use the extra wide backing fabric for dressmaking? You certainly can. I'll, if you just joined us, I'll, I'll give you all the details of those in just a sec. So this is the turquoise one. Extra wide being 112 inches, not centimetres in width. Um, so I'll show you that in just a second. But yeah, it's, it's cotton. It's a cotton fabric. It's not a really thin fabric, so you could easily use this for dressmaking, Patricia. Um, it's got a nice drape to it. Um, we're calling it backing fabric because it can be used as, um, I reckon, a super king size quilt backing without having to join two pieces together. Um, but it, it's basically cotton, so you can use it for whatever you like. You can make curtains out of it. You can make pajamas from it. You could make dresses from it. It's, that's entirely up to you. It does have a nice handle. It does feel nice, and you can see it's got a lovely drape to it as well. Um, right, with the aqua, we've got less than two metres left. And this, when we say extra wide, look at this. That's how wide we are. It's massive. <laughs> and all of that's just for £8.99. I just, and that's, it's, it's huge. Um, so 112 metres, 112 metres, 112 inches wide. And we've got lots of colours for you, but turquoise is going to go. And let's take a look at the lime green. That's been your second favourite. This is a back in stock, so we sold out previously. So it's just a happy colour, isn't it? It's all fresh and uplifting and fun. 
So, I remember, we know you bought this before. It has been incredibly popular in the past, and the green, as I said, is a back in stock. We've sold out before. What have you made with it? These huge strips of fabric, what are you going to do? Is it the backing on a quilt? Is it a pair of curtains? Are you making play mats? Um, is it going to be, I don't know, tablecloths? Are you making duvet covers and pillowcases? Are you redecorating your room in bright citrus lime greens? Or are you going to make yourself a frock? Love to know. <laughs> now we've got a lot of this one in stock but it has been very popular um, because it sold out before we'd like to, we'd like to make sure it's not going to happen again um, but it might do. it might do with that one so that's green then we have the natural I, I'm pleased we have a natural and we have a white as well because um, if you are backing um, a quilt with these, um, you wouldn't use natural if you've got white in your fabric, would you, in your quilting fabric? So it's nice that we've got the both of those. I like the idea of embroidering over the top of them as well, maybe using some of your embroidery thread uh, and just free motion embroidering. That could actually be your quilting. So you could do a whole uh, cloth quilt um, just by putting two layers and your wadding in the centre and then quilting all over the top. It's like a self-stippling fabric, isn't it? And yeah, good way, good way to practice if you're, if you're new to free motion embroidery. It's like having a template to follow. And it doesn't matter if you don't follow the lines exactly. So again, £8.99, 112 inches wide. We ought to look what that, what that is in um, centimetres, really, hadn't we? So there's the navy. And Navy's got um, a black squiggle on it, so it doesn't stand out quite so much as the paler one. So if you wanted something a little bit more subtle, then that's a good one to go for. Again, it's £8.99, 100% cotton. So 112 inches wide is 284 and a half centimetres. That's almost three metres. There's your pink, so a pale pink with a dark pink squiggle. This has been a very popular one as well, popular. Oh, it's been a popular one. Um, again, eight, eight pounds 99, massive piece of fabric you get in there. Um, oh, natural, by the way, just skipping back again, the natural's only got seven meters left now, That's, that one's going really quickly. And then finally, you've got your white on white. This is brand new, so you won't have seen this one before. So I'm just folding it right side out so you can see the squiggles. And this has been really popular as well. Popular. So I like a white on white. It adds a little bit of interest to a fabric, but doesn't detract from anything that you're putting it with. It is a really lovely quality. You know, sometimes when you see a, a real bargain, you get it home, you think, oh, no, I understand why it was only eight ninety You're not going to be disappointed with this one. I just, it, it feels really lovely. It's a really nice quality. It's not thin and flimsy. Um, and there's just so much you can do with it. That's a proper stash buster. So just to reiterate, yes, Patricia, you can use it for dressmaking. You can make so much. Um, oh, with the white, there's only three metres of this one left. Go. Right, I need to give you a reminder of our rainbow bundle. Remember, we're down to single figures of this one. So, here, these are half meter pieces, and you've got red, yellow, pink, green, purple, blue, and, um, and navy, all for £23.99. So, there's three and a half meters in total there, half a meter of each of seven. Um, Seven colours. Again, 100% cotton. 112 centimetres wide, this one. Not 112 inches like the backing fabric. Um, but again, nice quality of cotton. So you're making rainbows for your windows. Only got three left. Uh, check out your baskets if you're ordering that one straight away. That's, that's, that's about to go as well. Um, let's take a look at some frozen fabrics. So this one is the season to celebrate. Um, 
Let's open that up and show you. Again, you've got half a metre, 112 centimetres wide. And it's a non-directional fabric with Anya and Elsa and... I wanted to... I always call him Odif, and that's the sprays, or Ulfa, but that's my rotary cutter. What's his name? Olaf. Olaf, the snowman. Um, so this is Olaf Adventure on Light Blue. Again, lots of detail in this one as well. When you take a look at the, um, the swirls of frost, there's tiny, very fine, the snowflakes on there. So again, non-directional, so the, uh, the images are all over the place, so it doesn't matter which way around you use it. And I think with a non-directional print, you tend to get more for your money, more value, because you're not wasting anything, is what I meant. I knew what I meant. This is nice quality as well. So this is more of a turquoisey background. Again, half metre, 112 wide. So I have Elsa and Olaf. And snowflakes. Is this from the new Frozen? I can't keep up to date. Well, I, I can't. I can't remember to be honest. <laughs> and there we go. We took um, b before we we weren't allowed to leave the house. We um, took my youngest granddaughter to see Frozen. Wasn't interested at all. And she went to sleep halfway through. Do you know? And the cinema. They've got huge relaxing chairs and it's amazing. It's like going to a spa. You've got Elsa and Anna and Olaf again for this one. We haven't got the reindeer, have we? Okay. That, these are make nice um, cuddle cushions, children's bedrooms. And uh, remember, they do come all joined up. So if you wanted to make something large, if you're making clothing out of it, or you wanted to make um, drawstring bags and PE bags and stuff like that. This is Olaf. Um, and again, what I like about this one is that they the images kind of don't overlap each other, so you could cut out a complete strip of Olaf's without chopping his feet or his head off. So you can make a nice border with that one as well. And it looks almost knitted, doesn't it? It's got a very Scandinavian kind of look to it. Little sleighs on here as well and um, snowflakes. Again, £6.99 for those. I think we've seen all the fabric, haven't we? Okay, seeing all the fabric, if you want a reminder of anything, come and let me know. Um, go on Facebook, and I've got the, the Facebook TV visitor posts open at the moment. So if you want to come and say hello, come and say hello. I want to give you a reminder of the um, 50 spools of embroidery thread um, but I didn't get them quite right, did I? I shan't take them all out. I think you get the idea. There are 50 spools of thread in 50 colours and these work out at only a pound a pop, not including the price of the box even. But you've got such a wide variety of colours, um, which is important when you're free motion embroidering or if, you're, if you have an embroidery machine, um, because it just means you've always got the right colour. And it's nice to have shades of the same colour so that you can actually shade. If you look at a red flower, it's probably deeper at the bottom of the petal and lighter at the end of the petal. So you've got the ability to do that when you've got a whole palette of colours like this one. It's all polyester, so it's nice strong thread. That's important with an embroidery machine because you're sewing so many times over the same spot. And it's got a lovely sheen to it as well, so it's going to reflect the light beautifully. And of course, with your embroidery thread, it tends to be a little bit finer um, than the thread that you're going to make a dress with because um, it is sewn over the same spot so many times. We don't want the thread to leave holes in there. So 50 of those, all in their own case. 
for £49.99. We did a bit of shopping around before the show just to see how much other people are selling them for. And we found a lowest price of £56. And this is back in stock. So we have sold out of this previously as well. So stock up while we've got them. Um, nice idea if you know somebody that has an embroidery machine. Again, you've got a fantastic gift there. You, you can never have too much thread, no matter what kind of sewing that you do. 30% um, of the stock sold out now, and you've only seen this in the previous hour. Um, so again, want to get hold of that or stock up on that. That is entirely up to you. There's 500 metres on each one of these spools, so you're getting a massive amount of thread on those as well. They're not they're not tiny little sampler sizes. You've got a substantial amount of thread on those. So 50 th spools, 50 colours. The box is absolutely jam-packed full. So there's no room for anything else in there. It's got, you've got the lot. Um, and lots of shades. You've got your basics in the, um, in the blacks and the whites, but then there's creams and pinks and greys and oranges and purples and every colour that you could imagine. Any colour that you need, I'm sure you're going to find it in there. Um, right, let me just give you a quick reminder of some of your favourites, for instance, the pastel bundle. So here you've got five half metres of fabric, two and a half metres in total in pastels. So we have the lilacs and a pale blue and a baby pink. Not very many of these left now. Um, we've got the, the minty green with this one and then a, a lemon. For £16.99, two and a half metres in total. So great for building up your stash. But... Great for making homewares and things like that as well. That's how much you're getting in each one. They make a nice colour palette together, don't they? And I was saying about using um, a plane to make your patterns go further. But these planes together are really pretty. We've got five left. Counting down. I <laughs> just £16.99. pence. Now, have a look on the website now because we're almost out of time in this show. If you wanted to go for the extra wide fabric, there's almost three metres in width of this fabric, um, but there's not very much of the turquoise left. We do have other colours available for you. So if you just joined us, take a look on sewingstreet.com and it'll take you straight to our homepage and underneath there are all the products that we've had for you in the show. What you'll also see there are the products that are coming up in the next hour. So we've got a, a new ruler for you that you can create these kind of designs behind me from. Um, if you're a patchworker or if you're a bag maker, you're going to find it really useful for rounding off um, corners, um, for cushion covers and things like that as well. And we've got the 720, the Elna 720, which is my favourite sewing machine that we bring you here because it's the same as the one that I've got, but more improved. So have a look on the website and that's sewingstreet.com. Um, and if you've got any questions, then call our call centre, which is 0800 001 4433. But don't go anywhere. Well, you can, you can nip off for five minutes if you like. Um, because we're going to be back for another hour live very shortly. See you in a bit. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon.
Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan and I'm here to give you my top tips on how I go about enjoying my sewing experience. My first top tip, as everybody knows, rotary cutter safety. If you're not using it and it's not on the mat, that blade must be locked. Please be safe. My second top tip is always buy more fabric than you need. If you don't have it, it's always going to sell out. You're going to struggle to find it. And when you do, it's going to cost you a lot more than when you were going to buy it originally. So buy it all. You always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is Positive or negative, always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective, everybody has a different take on things, and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you. And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you because they have helped me. For more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview channel 74, Sky channel of 670. Otherwise, follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hello there, welcome back. You're watching Sewing Street and I'm Debbie. Um, we've got something new for you in this show and it is a roundup ruler from Creative Grids. A roundup ruler is I'm surprised actually when I started using it how many uses I found for it. So it has been designed to be able to bring you um, the uh, orange peel shape, you can do a drunkard's path or that's a quarter circle. You've got the large petal shapes there as well, basically using either 8 inch, 5 inch or 4 inch squares of fabric. Um, Creative Grids very kindly put a QR code to a video, we'll have a look at that later on. Um, so you'll have someone actually explaining how to use the ruler and how to um, create all of these different shapes. But if I show you the ruler itself, just on a piece of white so you can see the markings on there, we have, and to lay that next to each other because it's, it's rather large, um, you've got right angle sections here with a hole in the centre, and then you've got the different curves here so you can actually see the shape of that uh, orange peel shape, and then the larger one on this side. These two ends are both right angles, so you could use that to 
as a right angle if you wanted to, but when you're using an eight inch square, this will fit perfectly across there. So you can either, depending on which shape, and I'll take you these, through these in a second, you can either line up your fabric with the squares here, so that's a four inch square, that's a five inch square, or when you go diagonally across, you can use it with an eight inch square. So you can create your drunkard's path, you can make a complete eight inch circle from this as well, which is really easy to do, or you can do your smaller shapes there as well. And the way that it works, you're going to need to cut out, first of all, um, your squares, whether it's a four inch or an eight inch square. And you'll need a rotary cutter. So for instance, with the drunkard's path, I've got the five inch square here. So I'm going to line up this section with the edge of my five inch square. So you're probably going to want another ruler to cut the five inch square up. We've got those for you later on. And you will need your rotary cutter. We've got this for you later on. These do have grippy bits on the bottom, so you won't need your grippy sprays. So just spread your fingers out over the template to hold that down. And then you're just going to cut around the edge of the template. And there you've got the perfect shape. You can, of course, cut through more than one layer at a time if you wanted to. So let's do the same again with two squares. So I'd say you could cut up to six squares in total. Lay this over here and follow that round. Now it's recommended that you use some kind of bonding adhesive sheet on the back of these and then these are going to be appliqued onto your work. But you can arrange these in so many different shapes, so many different designs, that's entirely up to you. That's the start of a drunkard's path. And you put these onto blocks as well. So all we're doing here is cutting out the shapes and then you can put them on your blocks before you make up your patchwork. But if I wanted to make the orange peel from this, so that was my drunkard's path shape, but I'm going to turn the template around and now this section lines up perfectly with the edge. Spread your fingers out and hold it down again and cut around the shape. And there you have your petal. And these work the same way with the four inch, but with the four inch I use the smaller side of the template line that one up. It's written on here as well so it actually says four inch radius. So there's my four inch drunkard's path or if I wanted to make that orange peel segment cut around here. On the video um, if you wait through to the end then um, the presenter there will explain how to put that into a block as well and the sizes of the blocks that you're going to need. But basically, if you have your petal in the centre and say that's your, your block, sorry, your orange peel, that's going to be slightly smaller because you've got a seam allowance going on here. So she suggests that you fold this in half. This obviously isn't the block, so it's got heat and bond on the back and just finger crease the two ends and then you can line that up so that you know it's sitting perfectly centrally across the centre here. Now you can make circles with this as well, so you'll need an eight inch square to make a circle. Which I have here. Just move these bits out of the way. So this time I just need to make a mark in the centre, so just bear with me while I find a marking pen, which we had in the previous show, didn't we? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, now you can see where I was saying that this fits inside an 18th square. So the corners fit perfectly over there. And I'm just going to put a dot right in the centre on the fabric there. Move that over slightly. So hold this down again and cut around the four inches. Then we're going to turn it around and 
matching up the dot in the centre and the corner here. And cut around that side. Then we'll turn it around again. We've got these turnable mats on the show as well. Hole in the centre. Line up the right angle. And cut. Turn again. And line that up. This time I'm just lining the edges up because most of my circles disappeared now. And my 8 inch squares disappeared. And cut again. Oops, there you go. And there you've got your circle. I missed a little bit there. To be honest, this table's a little bit high for rotary cutting. <laughs> it's my excuse. I can't see what I'm doing at that side. <laughs> so then you've got a perfect circle just by moving the whole thing around four times. So that is the full circle. The petal, uh, the orange peel shapes, again, they're in two sizes. So you've got the four inch and the five inch. So that's the larger one. I mean, you can, you can use those as petals if you wanted to. You don't have to do that design. That's the smaller one. Then these are the quarter circles that you can make the drunkard's path with, or you can just join them all together to make a patchwork circle. Then you've got the circle as well. And then we've got the large um, petals. <laughs> and those, again, need an 8-inch square. You'll see when you get this home as well, it's not symmetrical. So you can't just cut around the edge and expect to see a petal shape. But we're going to line up the edge here and cut and then turn it around, turn this around, line up the corners and cut. So you've got a really large petal shape there as well. So you can make some really big blocks for your quilt very quickly, but the best thing about using the ruler is the accuracy that you're using it. And remember, you can cut through more than one layer at a time, so don't think you've got to cut every petal individually. You could probably do six or eight all in one go. Now, creative grids, they, they're, very, they're very nice people. They're very helpful to you as well. Um, they bring you very clear instructions and very clear markings. And on the back, if I just show you here, you see the dots and you see the outline, that's grippy. So that prevents your rulers from moving. So all you need to do is to hold it down, not too firmly even, and um, you don't need your grippy spray for this one, but really clear and easy to see. Um, there is a QR code on here. I'll just show you really quickly. If you have a, a QR scanner on your phone or on your tablet, you see, as quick as that, um, you hover over the top and it'll take you straight through to a YouTube tutorial. And that's quite comprehensive. She'll take you all the way through how to use it. She's got some of her own designs on the back there. You can see she's made fish out of wand and a drunkard's path um, and explains all the way around the ruler as well. And that's the same with all of the Creative Ridge rulers. So, um, I mean, you can have a look at that on YouTube now if you wanted to. You don't have to scan it. It is kind of a, a public... Um, video so anybody can have a look so if you're not too sure and you want some more information or you missed what i've just shown you if you wanted to take a look on youtube put creative grids in and it'll take you to their channel and their channel will um if you go onto videos or playlists it'll take you through all of the rulers that they have so there's instructions for everything so you're not going to ever get this home and think can't remember what to do with it now there is a booklet in here as well so that's how it actually comes to you. I shan't open this one to show you. Don't know what I've done with mine. Um, <laughs> I think I've left mine at home. Um, so the, there are more instructions in there as well. So help is at hand. If you're new to patchwork and quilting or applique work, you don't have to be a quilter to use these. They're, they're all applique pieces. Um, then you can be decorating anything from cushion covers and tablecloths to even dresses and attire. You, know, you, can, you can make whatever you like with those. We have less than 20 of these and they're brand new today. So let's do, should we do something from scratch? I've already got those squares cut out because you will need to use squares. 
So the fabric that I'm using here is Tilda Lazy Days. We don't have it on the show, but we do have it on the website. And it's really nice. So I've got a couple of pieces there together. Um, if you're new, there are things that you're going to need. And I can't recommend highly enough a rotary cutter, ruler and mat. I, I use these so often, no matter what, no matter what I'm making, um, whether it's bags or homewares or even dressmaking. So this is the um, six and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler. So this is a perfect size. Perfect size because if you're buying fabric off a bolt, um, the ruler will sit all the way across it. So you don't have to keep folding and folding and cutting. Um, use this in conjunction with a cutting mat. So go for the biggest mat that you can. And it's got, it's got two colors on it. It's, it's very clever. Um, so at the moment, this is quite a heavily patterned fabric but the white markings are disappearing into the background. The black markings are standing out. So you've got all of the measurements and markings in two colours. So you can barely see the white look. The black stands out. So when we put a paler fabric underneath here, you've got the white, um, sorry, the black. When you put a darker colour, the white tends to stand out. But what I also like about this ruler is that you've got the measurements going in both ways. So I can measure from this end or from that end. So no, no matter which way you plant your ruler on your fabric, you haven't got to think, oh, I've got that the wrong way around. You've got eighth of an inch increments as well. Um, and you have 45 degree markings and 60 degree markings. So if you're cutting out bias binding or you're making, um, uh, you want to square something up, or if you're making 60 degree triangles for maybe tumbling blocks, you've got all of the markings on there to help you. And again, just like with the roundup ruler, um, you've got these dots and those stop it from slipping. So no grippy spray with this one either. So to cut, I tend to use the ruler and the mat together. Even if I'm just using the ruler, I've still got to have it lined up on the mat because my head just says everything has to be square and everything has to be perfect. So my fabric is folded in half. If I'm cutting um, a folded piece of fabric, I line the fold up with the ruler and with the mat. So don't go by the selvage, go by the fold, because if your selvage isn't at exactly the same position as the fold and you cut at a very slight angle, you have a piece of fabric that's shaped like a dog leg. So I like to measure or cut with my fold on the uh, mat, but my fold on the mark on the ruler as well. So can you see that? Let's move that up a little bit. So that's on the line of the, of the mat and my ruler's here. I'm not measuring, I'm, I'm cutting square now, so it, that doesn't need to be measured. And then take your rotary cutter, expose the blade, Hold your ruler down and simply cut. So I need five inch squares I'm going to do for this one. So I'm going to go to the selvage side. Again, I'm putting my fold on the, the fold here. And I'm going to chop off the selvage. And then I need five inches. So let's go from the end here. This end's already got half an inch on it. I don't want the extra half an inch. So I'm going to go from this side and I've just measured five inches across there. So the ruler's lined up with the edge of the fabric. And we'll cut and then move it across here. I should have just about five inches there. Oh, spot on. And then we'll turn this around. That's just folded under. Again, you don't need to use the measurements on the mat. It's just a habit, I think. I just, I just like everything lined up. So I've got all the layers of fabric there together. That's my five inch mark. Cut, move it across, five inch mark and cut. And always get into the habit of covering the blade over on your rotary cutter. They are very sharp. So this one is the Clover rotary cutter. It's a left or right handed rotary cutter and it's 45 mil, which is probably the most popular size of rotary cutter. If you're only going to buy one, then that's going to be the size that you'll use more than anything. 
Um, when you draw back the guard, you're ex exposing the blade. That is incredibly sharp. Even when they're blunt, they're incredibly sharp. And you can change left or right-handed by changing the position of the guard over to the other side by turning it over. All of the instructions are included in there as well. Now we do have a 28 mil. This is the size that I use if I'm um, putting out patterns when I'm dressmaking. Um, I, I'll do that freehand. Um, so I shan't take it out of the packet, but if I'm cutting around a curve, you just literally bend it around a curve. And I found that a lot quicker and easier than cutting with scissors. If you're cutting with scissors, you're lifting the fabric up off your table. You can't help it. Even if you've got the best dressmaking shears in the world, you're still having to lift up the fabric. So if you need to be really accurate, you get a more accurate cut with a, with a rotary cutter. But for smaller pieces, for um, not for too thick a fabric with this one, um, for freehand, or you can use it with rulers, you don't have to freehand cut with it. But that's a really useful little size as well. And again, it's left or right-handed. So if you can go for both, that would be a jo jolly good idea. So that's those, that's that. Where was I going with that? Shall we go back to the grids? Um, sorry, to the roundup. So when I've cut out my shapes, oh, one of these is really useful as well, particularly if you're cutting out shapes if you're a patchworker, because otherwise, unless you've got a table that you can walk all the way round, um, if you've got, if you're cutting more than than one piece together, say you're cutting up squares even, um, you'd have to rearrange all of those before you cut them again. Whereas with a, a swivelly mat, you can just turn that around. So with my pattern fabric, if you're going to put any kind of um, bonding on the back of it, I'd do that before I cut the squares out. But again, if I'm making a drunkard's path, let's cut a few layers together here. So just make sure that they're all lined up together. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm not being too careful with the patterns on these, so probably going to be a bit all over the place. Say so six. So these are five inch squares. So now I need to use the five inch square here. So pop that over the top. There's a diagonal line that goes straight from this corner to this corner and this corner squared up because it's a right angle. And let's cut around. Maybe six is ambitious. And then you've got your shapes. So then you can have a play. So you can sew these into a block Traditionally, you could just use these as a plique. You could make full circles, maybe with different colours would look quite nice. You could leave gaps in between. So you just have fun with them now. You can be your own designer. But the beauty is that every single one of these pieces is exactly the same shape and exactly the same size. When you're using rulers, you're, you're looking at precision, you're looking at accuracy. And with the creative grids, you've got versatility and ease of use as well. Remember, you've got those non-slip bits to stop it slipping all over the place, so they're thinking about safety. Very clear, very easy to follow. Um, if, you, if you don't have a QR scanner on your phone, um, go to your app store and download or make sure it's for free. And immediately you ho hover over the top of the barcode, then it'll come up with the, the video. So you've got help at hand there as well. And remember, you've got your instruction booklet included in that as well. So again, if you've got any questions, come and let me know. If you've got one already, let's see your pictures. And it's brand new for us today. And it's been really, really popular. It's really not surprising. It's just so clear and easy to use. Even if you only ever use it to cut out circles. Circles can be one of the most difficult things to find. And you can get a perfect eight inch circle when you're using the roundup corner on this as well. So that's why it's called roundup. Or oh, it could be for things like, um, maybe you are a bag maker. And you just want to round off a flap maybe. Or this could be a table mat. So let's move that there, that there. Let's trim this down. So as if I'd already quilted it. So 
So this is obviously a very small quilt. It could be a table mat or a table runner. So this rotary cutter just goes through all of those layers so quickly. And then over this side. So look after your rotary cutter, as in don't drop it on the floor if you can help it. And that blade is going to last you for a long time. Um, don't cut paper with it. Don't let your husband cut out um, address labels for envelopes with it. Um, voice of experience and be careful of your cutting mat. If you've got any kind of glue on your cutting mat and it's, it's dried solid and you hit it with the blade, you can dent it. If you go over a pin, you'll make a chip out of it and then you may as well just throw the blade away. Um, because one little nick means that you're going to have threads occasionally that aren't cut through. So it should last you a long time, but um, go for spare blades whenever you can see them. The 45 mil blades, there are some on our website, so I'd, I'd stock up on those. I also like to save the um, the packaging that they come in to put old blades back in again after so that I can throw them away without worrying about people lifting them up. So we've got two choices here. We can round off the corner with a four inch or you can round off a corner with, with a five inch so you get a larger curve. So it depends what you're going to do with it. Maybe the larger curve is going to be a bit easier if you're using bias binding. Because these two edges here are right angles, and I've got a square corner, I can line up the straight sides of the ruler against here and cut. So I'm at a funny angle with this. And you have a perfect curve. So imagine that's um, a bag flap on a very large tote bag. And just to show you the smaller one, Difficult, isn't it? Um, finding the right size of circle for rounding things off. I think I've been through everything round in my cutlery, cutlery, crockery drawer. There we go. I've been through every size of plate. So that's that's obviously not even because I've got one five inch side and one four inch side. But you can see the difference in in the curves there. But you get the perfect curve in every single side, and that's helped actually by having that right angle here. Because sometimes even if you've got a plate and you're trying to line it up, it can be a little bit off. So it's not a perfect curve. But here, because you've got the right angled sides on each side, again you can swizz it around. Um, we're going to be selling out of this quite soon. There's less than 10 of these remaining now, so I'm so glad that you love it. Um, you can still get hold of it, remember. Whoops, let's chop that off. I've got to round off the final corn. It's almost like a speech bubble now, isn't it? Um, let's just round that one off with the five inch. There we go. So have a look on the website. We've got more creative grid rulers and templates on there as well. So that's um, sewingstreet.com. Um, if you do have any questions, you can come through right now on Facebook because I, well, I'm not there, am I? Uh, because I was scanning. Where are you? Um, oh, not me. I'm on, I'm on search and then I'm on Sewing Street and then I'm on uh, <laughs> um, posts and then visitor posts. Morning, Sarah Bowl. I'm loving the ruler. Top tips and ideas. Thank you very much. <laughs> there. That's about all it does, really. Incredibly versatile. I think you're going to use it a lot. If you're a bag maker and certainly if you're a quilter, um, then or if you love applique, you can be creating some really lovely shapes. So floral shapes and petals and, of course, the circles and the quarter circles that you see behind me as well. So really versatile. So have a look on the website for the rulers as well. We've got more coming up, I'm sure, over the next few days. But that one is going to sell out. You've seen it, haven't you? You've seen my machine here. I say my machine. This is, um, I, I have the 
Genome version, but it's the previous model. So this one is like my machine, but then with extra bits. So I do have machine envy. Um, let me show you some of the stitches first of all on this machine. We have shown it to you quite a few times. It's been a really popular machine. Um, so if you want to see a full or a fuller demonstration, then have a look on uh, the Sewing Street YouTube channel. And if you go back to about six weeks ago, I think we first brought it to you. But if you put them into the Sewing Street channel's search bar, 720, then the show should come up. I love the decorative stitches. They're, they're different. My favourite one, I don't know where I'd use it, is the washing line. Look at that. It's got little trousers on top, but they've got pegs. There's so much detail in it. This would be um, a lovely border, maybe on pockets or around cuffs if you're a dressmaker. Loving the stars there as well. We've got little hearts on banners. I like, I like anything to do with sewing, so the, uh, the mannequin is perfect. You can stitch all of these individually. So there's a lock stitch, which will make the machine finish after one stitch. The word stitch is actually a stitch. Um, so you can stitch that out once or it'll just carry on sewing if you don't. So you just choose one stitch and it stitches out a stitch. That made no sense at all. Um, there's cats. I mean, there's so much more than I, I was saying out here. But this is what I was saying about um, having them individually. The handmade with the flowers on each end is one stitch. And then we've got scissors and shoes and a needle and thread and a bobbin. And it's always a good idea to stitch a few of these out first because they, they can look different to the pictures. So for instance, here's your pictures. And there's the bobbin. And I thought it was going to be a tiny stitch. And it's ended up being quite large, so it's it's which I like. I prefer that, but it's quite nice to actually um, stitch them out first of all. But these are all of the stitches. This sits in the back of your machine. We have your most used stitches or utility stitches at the top here. This is mode one. The second is mode two. So we've got more utility stitches and buttonholes. These are great stitches for um, applique. Um, then as we come down, we've got honeycomb stitches. Look nice with smocking. Um, joining pieces of fabric together and these are all of the decorative stitches and satin stitches which you can elongate as well and then we've got fun stitches with boats and trains and cars and things like that I'm going to skip over to here because there is a, um, a professional grade throat plate that you can put on the machine it only does a straight stitch and it's incredibly quick and it's got its own foot as well so this um, disables all of the rest of the stitches when you put that throat plate on so you can only stitch out the appropriate stitches for the plate and that's really important because the plate's only got one hole in the middle so if you use a decorative stitch it'll swing from side to side and you'll break a needle I'll show the rest of the stitches first and then we'll have a look at the feet which are in a very well organized box thank you Kat so here's how, they've got a memory on here as well, so you can store up to 20 icons. Um, so we can, we can put together things like the stitch and the, and the bobbins, and you can mirror image as well. So those two stitches are mirror image. This is all mirror imaged. We have twin needle sewing ability, and those are just a few of the buttonholes. And this is what I was saying about stretching or extending the stitches. So you can make one stitch up to five times larger, but the machine fills in all of the gaps. So just really quickly, let's, let's play with our feet. So in here, we have a walking foot. That's your very special um, straight stitch foot. That's incredibly quick. And then we have a blind hem foot, we have an over edge, uh, sorry, a rolled hem foot, we have a quarter inch foot with guide, we have an over edge foot, we have an open toed satin foot, we have a closed toed satin foot, we have an adjustable free motion embroidery foot, you've got your zipper foot in there, you have a button placement foot, uh, you've got extra bobbins and then underneath here you have your high performance really fast a straight stitch plate that's only got the one little hole um, so that's what I'm saying about don't use it with a, um, a decorative stitch you can't anyhow then you've got your straight stitch plate this is your adaptable um, free motion embroidery foot so that's got a closed toe an open toe and it's got a disc shaped toe which is here 
which has a quarter of an inch markings on it so that is perfect if you're going to do some echo quilting. Um, we have a buttonhole foot with a plate behind it and this will enable you to sew buttonholes through thicker fabrics. You put the fabric in between the plate and the buttonhole foot. You have a seam lifter um, so you can sew buttons on with shanks or that'll help go over really thick seams on things like the side of jeans and you have a seam guide which helps you sew in a straight line and everything else that you would expect bobbins, spool holders you've even got some nets because you can use this with cones of thread as well so that's all you get there so we have a tour around the machine that is oh do you get a spare set of bobbins as well with it um, somewhere and a full instruction manual and you've got a two-year warranty from Elna as well. I love this machine. I really, I do, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. There is a knee lifter um, and you've got a nice cover for it and a really big wide foot pedal comes with this one. So this is it, look. Mm. So I need to thread it up. So we've got a, um, a thread guide up here so you can use cones with it you can use larger um, cones of thread regular threading the uh, tension disc is on the front of the machine it makes it easier to clean you've got a couple of little hooks that you need to thread that through and then when you get to the one just on top of the needle clamp pull the thread to the left hand side and then it goes over to a needle threader hooks in place this comes down at the side and doesn't thread. <laughs> that goes through there. That forms. Can I? I'm just going to turn this so I can see what I'm doing. That forms a loop at the side of the machine. That's not clicked into place. Uh, sorry, it forms a loop at the back of the machine needle, so that then you can pull that thread through and thread it like so. I'm just going to give that a bit of a wipe. There we go. So that's threaded and we are ready to go as soon as I switch it on. And there we go. So this is your um, stitch selection board. So remember we saw all of the stitches previously. Let's have that I put over here. So to choose the stitches, you literally look on the board and this sits in the back of the machine and press in the number. It's as easy as that. If you can count from one to about 200, um, then you're going to be able to choose those stitches really easily. Um, we have the memory button. So if I wanted to join some stitches together, we'll do that in just a second because I haven't done that for a while. Then you press the letter M and those are stored on the screen up here. So really clear and easy to understand screen. The C is if you make a mistake and I don't want to store that anymore. Press C and that's cancel and it comes out again. There's a lock button. So now nothing's going to happen. So if you've got kids or dogs um, in the house and you don't want them playing with the machine or accidentally is treading on the foot pedal, then press the lock button and that kind of seizes everything. Um, they've got lots of settings on here as well. When we go over to the screen, you can set the sound, you can set the brightness of the screen. Um, you can even set the default length of stitch. Normally when you go to a, um, like a straight stitch, when you first switch the machine on, this one goes to uh, 2.4 millimeters in length. If you use a 2.5 or a 2.2 more often and you want the machine to set that stitch when you first stitch, switch the machine on, you can do that in there as well. Um, you've got a, a separate bobbin winding button. So that's a completely different motor to wind on your bobbin. That means that you can still wind your bobbin and, and carry on sewing. That's your elongation um, stitch. So I know I said with some of the satin stitches, you can make those up to five times longer. This is a mirror image button. So some of the stitches can be flipped from one side to another. For instance, the shoe, which is stitch number 196 in mode two. So I should get a little picture of a shoe there. If I press the mirror image, it turns it around the other way. If you can't do that with a stitch, then the machine will kind of chirp at you just to let you know that that's not available. When you select the twin needle um, stitch uh, button, oh, I can't use a twin needle with that one. Let's go back to a straight stitch. Easy thing to just switch the machine off and on again, then it goes straight back to straight stitch. And now I select the twin needle button. 
that is going to stop me using any stitches that aren't appropriate for a twin needle like the decorative stitch that you just saw or maybe a buttonhole so if I go into mode 2 and try to put in 023 it's chirping can you hear that because you can't use that um, that stitch that, that feature with the buttonhole so the machine's looking after itself. It doesn't want to break any needles. Thank you very much. Um, that's your mode button. Remember, we've got three modes. So we've got um, mode one, utility. Mode two, a decorative. I didn't show you this side. That's mode three, which has all of your alphabet on there as well. Uppercase, lowercase, and you've got numerals there too. And over here, you have your um, thread snipper, needle up, down position. That's the lock button, reverse button, and start, stop. Because you don't need to use a foot pedal with this machine. You can just use the start, stop button, and you've got a speed control on the front as well. There is a presser foot pressure dial on the top of the machine. And that alters the amount of pressure. Look, it's got ears, look. The amount of pressure that goes onto the foot. So if you're sewing through heavier fabrics, you may want to lift that up a little bit. If you've got very lightweight fabrics, you may want to increase the pressure slightly. And again, you've got the tension right there in front of you. So now I can't remember what I said I was going to do. Oh, memory. So let's take our fabric. And always have a practice on the same kind of fabric that you are going to be using for your project. So at the moment, it's, what's it telling me? Was I on to us telling me to take the twin needle function off? So I told you, it's very intuitive, this machine. Um, let's join some stitches together. This is the fun bit. So we can do letters. Let's do some letters. We haven't done those for a while. Um, so I need to go into mode three over here. So I press the mode button until it goes to three. And then I've got all of the numbers from the alphabet here. Should we do some really bold ones? So I, let's, I'm going to put my name in. I'm going to do a 404. So I should have a D. And then a 405 which is an E, and it's nice that these come up as well. Not all machines will show you what's coming up. Some machines that even we bring it, I've got numbers, one, two, three, four, not the actual letters. And then I need a couple of 402s. And a 402. And a 402. Oh, no, I've put three Bs in. If you press the cancel button, that will take you back again. So where are we? I've cancelled the whole thing, haven't I? Uh, let's start again. Uh, 404. There's my D. Didn't press the M to remember it. There's my D. And then a 405. M. How many of you are at home shouting M? 402. M. 402. M. 402. M. Oh, no. C. And then I. 409. M. And then an E. 405. And then I think I'd like to put a space after that. So the box shapes that you see down here are actually different sizes of spaces. So let's do a 999, the 999, M, and that's left a space. And then let's go back to mode two. And let's do the bobbing, because I like that one, 192, M. And then I can do a 192, mirror image, M. Hmm, so it's flipped it upside down. Then we can do a 189, because I like that one. That's the washing line. And then let's put a car on there, a 184. I think I might be running out of fabric now. And an M. And then the lock stitch, which was the button on the front of the machine over there, there is a stitch for that as well. So I'm going to put in 202 M. And that will mean that this whole row of stitches stops at the end. You can do that on individual stitches without using the memory, just by pressing that button as you're sewing. So let's see what happens. And this machine is so fast. Let's take that thread out of the way. You're looking at, I think it was 1,350 stitches a minute on this one. It's faster than a lot of overlockers. And overlockers are pretty quick. So while well, that's stitch, have we got any questions? No, jolly good, must be doing my job right then. Um, again, if you do want to come through, we've got about 10 minutes left on the show. So if you've got any questions that you want to ask, come on the Facebook page. You can see those stitches coming out now. Nice big bold Debbie. Whoops. Oh, you do have an extension table as well. Our table isn't actually big enough um, <laughs> to put the extension table onto. 
But that, an extension table is really important, the bigger the better. Because if you've ever tried sewing, I've still got my foot down, by the way, I haven't done anything, it stopped all by itself. Um, if you've got a weighty fabric coming off the end of your machine here, it can pull and distort your stitch line. So if you're fighting with fabric to hold it up, um, you're going to get a wobbly stitch line. So the extension table is really important for that reason. And also to um, rest your wrists on while you're sewing, while you're doing free motion embroidery maybe. So there's my Debbie Bobbin Bobbin washing line car combo. I don't know where I would use it, to be honest, but just to show you how you can join. You can flip them upside down, put them the right way around, and you can store these in a file as well. You've got an FSA file store on the machine too, so the machine will remember it when you switch the machine off and when you come back to it again. So let's have a look at the... So just looking for some scissors. There's a box for me. I don't like a loose thread. I do that at home, so I've just chucked that on the floor. <laughs> I've got um, a laminated floor at home, so everything gets chucked on the floor as I'm working, then I can just sweep everything up afterwards. But this is carpet and it sticks to it, so sorry about that. Um, right, let's come out of that and go back into mode. That will again take me straight back to... Where's my straight stitch gone? There's the straight stitch right in front of me. You, you can adjust what you're seeing on here as well, and you can adjust the length and... You don't adjust the width of a straight stitch because it doesn't have a width, but when you move the width um, button, it takes the needle over to the left and to the right-hand side. Um, so you can get very close to a, a seam if you wanted to as well. I wanted to show you that lock button, actually, because we haven't looked at that before. Um, let's go to a decorative stitch such as... Mm -hmm. I'm looking at those upside down, silly devil. I'll, I'll do a 195 in mode 2. So easy this is. The machine has... No, I didn't want that one. I pressed the wrong button, didn't I? 195. That's the one I wanted. I wanted the little hearts. Um, the machine will advise you which foot that it would like you to use. You've got your stitch length, you've got the recommended tension, which is between three and five, and my feed dogs are up. So you've got lots of information on here to take into account as well. Now, if I'm sewing a decorative stitch like this one, so I'll put my foot down and away we go. And then if you want to stop at the end of a decorative stitch, on most machines, it's guesswork. So it might be round about there. No, I've, it's, I'm halfway through a heart and I wanted to finish on the end of the heart. So what I'm going to do, if I'm taking the foot pedal out, and we'll just use the start stop button. So when you're getting towards the end of the, the line that you're stitching, I think that'll, that'll do. I want to stop somewhere around about now. If you press the lock button, and again, I'm, I'm not doing anything else here, it stops. So instead of me trying to guess whereabouts that have stopped and risk having the, the stitch too small or too large, that's stopped at, at the end of the stitch. So that's just a nice little feature as well. There's so much to talk about with this machine. There's, there's no way that we've covered everything. When we do have your um, instruction booklet, which is really comprehensive, lots of diagrams in there. Um, this is all in English as well, so this is all instructions. You've got troubleshooting, all of the different plates are explained, um, what the different stitches are for, what the feet are for, there's buttonholes, how to sew buttonholes, where to use that seam lifter, um, and lots. I like lots of pictures. I can understand a lot more looking at diagrams than I can from um, reading words. So I'll show you how to put a zip in, how to use that extra fast straight stitch, changing needles, care and repair worth having a look at that before you even start sewing. So take it out of the box and look at that first of all. Um, Elna have a fantastic customer service base as well. They're based in Stockport in Cheshire. Um, so British based. Elna, Janome are all under the same umbrella. Um, and if you do have any questions or queries, give them, a, give them a ring. They're very nice people. So, and they're very nice machines. Oh, I didn't tell you as well, this is cast. This is absolutely solid. Um, which is the one thing I really liked about the machine. I'm going to show you something. Um, 
I was going to show you something. It doesn't shake and vibrate all over the place. Oh, 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 oh. Um, I was going to show you with a glass of water that I brought in the studio and I seem to have lost it, but it's over there. Don't do this at home. Thank you. So if I go to a straight stitch, so mode one, stitch one, and I'm going to put that, that's not going to fall off there, is it? Right, and then we're going to sew. Oh, I'm going to sew with that, aren't I? There's barely a ripple on that glass. So this is why, I, one of the reasons why I bought my machine is because... <laughs> never, never, never put water near your machine, but just to show you. It doesn't move around. It's sturdy and it's solid. And it's quiet, but there's no shaking. Um, if there is any shaking when you get your machine home, it's probably the table that it's on, not actually the, the machine itself. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't go into a store with a glass of water and expect the, uh, the shop assistant to let you do that. <laughs> Shouldn't put water near your machine, but, you know, just wanted to show you. Got to prove a point, haven't I? Um, but yeah, so this, this part is absolutely solid, um, which means that it doesn't shake, and it's, it's just a really... In, oh, I was going to say, it's not an industrial machine, but it's that kind of grade of machine. It's just really solid. It's, I mean, it's proper workhorse. I mean, you can imagine how much I use my sewing machine. It's every single day. And in fact, my daughter's using it more than I am at the moment because she just can't stop sewing. Um, so it's literally on the go from whenever I get up in the morning, which is normally stupid o'clock, um, all the way through to early evening. It's, it's just on the go. So I wanted a machine that was powerful. Um, I wanted a machine that could sew through thicker layers of fabrics and heavier layers of fabrics. I do a lot of bag making, so I use a lot of stabilizers and interfacings, and I use a lot of um, faux leathers and that kind of things, really heavy denims and canvas. So that was my requirement when I phoned up the dealer that I bought mine from, um, and I said I want a sturdy machine that will sew through th thick fabrics, and I want it to be quick. Because the more experienced you are at sewing, the quicker you want everything to be. I get quite impatient with, um, with small machines now. And that's exactly what I've got here. It's quick. It's intuitive. It's so simple to use. But it is an absolute delight to use. I'm sure you're going to be really over the moon with it. Um, then, so it does come with a knee lifter as well. That goes in the front here. So if you're free motion embroidering, if you're stippling a quilt or something like that, and you prefer to keep hands on uh, when you're starting and stopping, you move the knee lifter to one side and that, um, that lifts the foot pedal up and down. Um, to release the throat plate, if you're going to put the fast one on, there's a lever at the side here and that pops up so there's no unscrewing. So if you wanted to clean your machine out as well while you're there, um, that's, that's easy. And I'm always worried with these plates when you take them off that you're going to lose the little screws that come with them because you don't get replacements for those. And then that clips back in again. It's got an extra high presser foot lifter as well. Throw one in. There. Um, and the feed dogs, um, I dropped it a lever at the side as well, so there's no fiddling around at the back trying to find out, you know, where, where it is here. Uh, and when you drop the feed dogs and then try to sew, you'll have an alert. The machine's actually telling me that the feed dogs are down. So just in case that gets knocked by accident, um, it just lets me know. And of course, you've got the icon on the front here as well. So a really simple to use machine, but it's one of those machines that you might look at all of these features and say, I don't think I'll ever use them. The thing is, you've got them there. It, it's like buying, I don't know, a basic washing machine that doesn't do a boil wash, because I'm never going to use a boil wash. What happens when you've bought your new washing machine, you want to do a boil wash, and to dye some fabric or something. Um, so you've got, um, you've got the ability, you've, you've got um, potential with this machine. So it, it's so comprehensive, there's so many stitches on here. And that is whether it's going to be sewing stretch fabric, so if you're sewing jerseys, um, if you're uh, patchworking, if you're making curtains. Um, remember, you've got your walking foot included as well, so sewing through thick layers of fabric or lots of layers of fabric is 
ideal. Um, so you've got all of the right tools there. I can't see really what else you'd have to go out and buy when you've got this machine. And I can't see really why you'd ever want another machine. Until they go along and bring out the next model. <laughs> Um, let me show you the um, extension. If I if I go to a one two seven in mode two, that takes me onto a satin stitch, and you can extend it by pressing the E button by up to five times. So I can make that a really long stitch now. So you can change the look of them as well. Oh, put my foot on the foot pedal, and I wasn't plugged in. While you're sewing, you can slow it down so if you you know if you're going around corners or you want to sew something really precise um, or you're just not very confident sewing at a, a high speed then you can do that oh, I was going to try and do that when it was sewing it won't let me so let's stop let's alter that back down again what am I on three two three and start again so it's really simple to use right now we're just about out of time here um, we've still got more coming up for the next couple of hours here on Sony Street um, so stay with us for a couple of hours we'll be seeing repeats of shows that have been on previously and we'll be back again live tomorrow morning at eight o'clock in the morning um, if you've just joined us and you thought, oh, I missed it, if you have a look on our YouTube channel later on today, you should see all three shows that we've had for you this morning. And while you're there, you can take a look at uh, any of the other shows. So that's, that's a good way of having a catch up. A lot of channels don't do that. You can't see shows that are backdated, but we saved them all. Um, now, with the, oh, remember the squiggly backing? This is the extra wide back, backing fabric. It's, um, it's almost three meters in width. Could you please check out your baskets? If you've got this on your baskets in the website, please go through to check out because we're about to sell out of some of the colorways. Um, and it's the same with that box of embroidery thread that we had previously. This again, 50 threads for just under 50 pounds. Um, that's about to go as well. We had a really busy morning. We had lots and lots of sellouts. We've tried to bring you back um, some things that were sold out of previously. I think I'm opening the hinges there. Um, <laughs> um, and this is one of them. Um, so it's, it's a fantastic price. It's about six pounds less than we can find it for anywhere else. Um, so if you haven't seen it, have a look on the website now on sewingstreet.com. But anything that's in your baskets, please, can you go through to check out? We've been very, very busy and I don't want you to miss out. Somebody phones up on the phones and orders something that you've got on the website, they can pinch it out your basket. So, OK, now tomorrow morning, um, we have John and he has more creative grids uh, with the Dresden plate. At nine o'clock he's got a quilts roundup and at ten o'clock it's quilt as you go Sophie tote bag with Cara Aikerman. She's not actually here, we don't have any guests in the studio, studio at the moment for health and safety reasons obviously, um, but Cara has very kindly been making some video, videos from home so she can still demonstrate a product but it's going to be from home because I don't think everybody seems to be doing that at the moment, don't they? I think most of the up-to-date channels are um, Skyping in or Zooming in or whatever it is you're doing to to broadcast. So it's been lovely to have your company today. Again, if, if you wanted sewing machines, if you want fabrics, if you want tools, if you want the rotary cutters, if you want mats, if there's anything that your little heart desires that's sewing related, I suggest you go to sewingstreet.com and take a look there. Check out the Facebook fans page as well while you're, uh, while you're on the internet um, and join the group. I'm sure you'll be welcome along with open arms and it's a nice little community there. People are chatting together and coming up with ideas and passing comments and things like that. And of course, they all get read by Sarah at Sewing Street as well. So if you've got any requests, if there's anything that you'd like to see, if there's anything you don't want to see, it would be nice to have your opinions because it's, it's nice to work together on things like this, isn't it? We're only eight weeks old. We're only baby channel. Um, but we are already, we're taking notice of what you're saying and what you're asking for and uh, hopefully delivering it for you. Um, right, I'm going to be back again on Saturday. I've got something new for you on Saturday. I'm not telling you what it is yet because I haven't even seen it yet. But it's in a very big box and it's coming home with me today. So, but yeah, sewing machines, have a look on the website. We've got lots of different, you know, they're, they're not all of this kind of standard. If you're at a lower price point, then do take a look on the website. You're going to find a lot there. Okay, John's up tomorrow and I shall see you bright and early at eight o'clock on Saturday morning. Enjoy the rest of your week. <laughs>